Chick-fil-A, the southern-based quick-serve restaurant known for charity, controversy, and really good chicken, is rapidly expanding throughout the U.S. There's a lot of information out there about one of America's favorite fast chicken stops, but you don't know the whole story until now. The surprising bestseller. Can you guess what the top-selling item is at Chick-fil-A? Stop right there. Wrong. It's the waffle fries. Sounds insane, right? But look at it this way. What is offered with every combo meal? Sure, you can substitute that kale thing or some other side, but let's be real. How many people can head to a fast food joint of any kind and resist the fries? The french fries are pretty good. French fried potatoes? Yep, french fries. That might have been a bit of a trick question. So how about this one? Which main menu item sells the best? It shouldn't come as too much of a shock, but the most popular chicken item at Chick-fil-A is the original chicken sandwich. Thanks in part to all the options, it beats nuggets hands down. There's nothing like the old, reliable, original chicken sandwich for countless customers. Barbecue sauce failure. Chick-fil-A might have thought a change to their barbecue sauce in 2016 would go over pretty well, but people had, well, strong opinions about the switch from original to smokehouse. Someone console me. Chick-fil-A changed their barbecue sauce and my life is ruined. So sad. Fans took to extreme measures to get their point across, and after months of social media protests, and what might just be the only online petition that ever actually worked, Chick-fil-A caved and announced they were bringing back the original barbecue sauce. Fans are serious. Hey Chick-fil-A, tell whoever came up with the idea to change your barbecue sauce that they maybe shouldn't have any more ideas. Ouch. Quick cooking. So what's the secret to Chick-fil-A? How do they make delicious chicken happen so fast? Fortunately for fans, Chick-fil-A president Dan Cathy spilled the beans on the real trick to how they get it done and just how they stumbled on the quick cooking idea. The Dwarf Grill was the original restaurant of Chick-fil-A founder Truett Cathy, and they started out serving workers on their break from the nearby Ford plant. Workers didn't have a lot of time to wait around for chicken to fry up for 15 minutes, so they developed a method of pressure cooking the chicken, then serving it up on a bun. They not only created what Kathy says was the first chicken sandwich, but it got everyone in and out quickly, was tasty, and was an absolute win. It takes about four minutes to cook up a Chick-fil-A sandwich, and that's the same method they still use today. Has being anti-LGBT hurt? The biggest court in the land is the court of public opinion and social media. And in June 2018, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey fell afoul of it when he tweeted an image that implied he ordered Chick-fil-A during LGBT Pride Month. Dorsey apologized, of course, and that's just one instance of outrage frequently directed at the notoriously conservative chain. So are they hurting their business by being so public about their personal views? The short answer is no. Sales have almost doubled since 2012, the year Chick-fil-A's anti-gay marriage backing became national news. Calls went out for Chick-fil-A protests and boycotts, but that press attention may have worked in their favor. It's possible that people who had never visited a Chick-fil-A became curious what the place was about and discovered a food they liked in the process. Meanwhile, President Dan Cathy has tried to take the sting out of some of the worst of his statements and says he's not the hate monger he's made out to be. I've been able to reach out to, to people in the gay community and sit down and have some incredibly wonderful dialogue with them. Chick-fil-A hamburgers. Don't tell the cows, but you can order a hamburger at a few Chick-fil-A's. How can they stoop to such dirty marketing deeds? Well, technically, it's not a Chick-fil-A, but it kinda is. Truett Cathy opened his first questionably named Dwarf Grill in 1946, later renamed it Dwarf House, and in case you're wondering, they all come complete with a tiny little door. The hateful Georgia location still exists today with a Chick-fil-A appendage on the original restaurant, and it's just one of 11 locations in the Atlanta area. And yes, the Dwarf House was one of many diners in the South boasting a full-service menu. To the dismay of the Chick-fil-A cows, the traditional diner fare included hamburgers, and it still does. Can we keep this one quiet? Franchisees don't get rich. No chain restaurant rakes it in like Chick-fil-A. Taking in just under 3.2 million gross revenue per store in 2012, the average Chick-fil-A can outgross even the mighty McDonald's. The franchise fee for Chick-fil-A is, as of 2018, a minuscule $10,000. That means owning a store as a franchise is a highly sought-after commodity. 
but potential owners shouldn't expect the luxuries that usually accompany the high life. There are some downsides, starting with the moment corporate picks the spot and buys the land where the restaurant goes. They'll own that forever, and franchisees will never have a chance to buy it from them. Everything at the location is rented to the franchisee for a 15% pre-tax sales fee. And on top of that, a whopping 50% of gross profits heads to the home office in Atlanta. To put that in perspective, the industry standard is for corporate to take between 5 and 10% of gross sales. They also demand that owners not just be a name on a sign somewhere. If you own a Chick-fil-A, they want you to be hands-on and promise to fall in line with all of their beliefs, including closing on Sundays. Still, the overwhelming majority of Chick-fil-A franchise owners keep their stores for life, even though they won't spend those lives as millionaires. Will they go public? Investors might be craving the chance to get their hands on some Chick-fil-A stock, but the Kathy family has steadfastly maintained that just ain't gonna happen. No, God, please, no, 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 no! Founder Truett Cathy died in 2014 after a long career, first behind the counter, then at the helm of a massive chain. But before he passed, he made a deal with his children that would make sure the devoutly religious beliefs and family values that he founded the company on would remain intact. His heirs can sell the chain, but it must remain private. Why keep his kin from the potential billions in windfall? It's impossible to tell for sure just what the conversation was. But industry analysts at Business Insider suggest it's because Kathy knew that publicly, Chick-fil-A would be beholden to shareholders and the opinions of others who might not share his family's conservative views. They point out Chick-fil-A's corporate statement to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is entrusted to us and to have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. That would have to change if they ever went public, and they suggest that change is a huge part of the reason their founder wanted them to stay private. Calorie Heavy Sauce It's not unheard of for people to squirrel away a few packets of Chick-fil-A sauce to apply to their own home cooking. There are copycat recipes available, but let's be honest, they're never quite the same, are they? A word of warning though, before you go and crank up your own homemade awesomeness with a pack or two of the real deal, you might want to consider investing in an elliptical. A solitary, tiny little one ounce packet of Chick-fil-A sauce is a whopping 140 calories. All American Chick-fil-A has only really had major success in America, even though they have ventured into international territories in the past. They pulled out of their short-lived South African venture in 2001, and it wasn't until 2014 they went international again, while still staying close to home. That's when they opened a Canadian location in the Calgary airport, which is admittedly not the first thing you think of when you start talking about north of the border. Chick-fil-A has had better luck in airports than in actually setting up shop overseas, and if the response to the 2018 news they were moving to Toronto is any judge, it might have something to do with the fact they're known as the controversial American chicken joint. So for now, they're sticking mostly to their home turf, with Alaska, Hawaii, and Vermont being the last states without a Chick-fil-A. Why Vermont? Hey, it's a strange place. Do we? Oh, go girlfriend, I'm your mother. Come on, Thorny, you're losing to the rookie. It's embarrassing. Come on, rabbit. Giving away. If you really want free Chick-fil-A, there's an app for that, and it rewards you for using the platform with free food items after you reach certain thresholds. That's the easy way, but there's another way to get free grub. If you're one of the first 100 people at a new Chick-fil-A grand opening, you'll receive a coupon for one free meal a week for a year. People take that seriously. If you want to get free food the really hard way, how about being born there? After one woman gave birth in a San Antonio Chick-fil-A in 2018, they promised the baby free food for life. Happy birthday! Chick-fil-A also isn't above giving away food for a worthy cause. And sometimes, human tragedy even outweighs their own rules about closing on Sundays. In 2016, after the tragic Pulse nightclub shootings in Orlando, Chick-fil-A not only broke their Sunday rules, but they reached across what had previously been a major boundary. A location near the club opened their kitchens and delivered food to first responders and to those donating blood on the Sunday after the attacks. Stores have also helped on the scenes of other natural disasters, from hurricanes to tornadoes, reaching out to help the community no matter what day of the week. That Chick-fil-A sauce. Given the tight reins placed upon franchises, you wouldn't expect a lot of independent thought allowed in the stores. But the Chick-fil-A powers recognized it when good stuff came out of a store in Virginia. As unlikely as it sounds, there were originally no dipping sauces with the chicken nuggets. Until, that is, Hugh Fleming saw a need. 
He was whipping up his own honey mustard for the nuggets, and later, by a happy accident, it was mixed in with the location's standard barbecue sauce. It was a massive hit, and people were pretty upset that was the only Chick-fil-A that carried it. Chick-fil-A tried to make a copycat version on their own, and while Honey Roasted Barbecue wasn't bad, it wasn't Mr. Fleming's sauce either. In 2007, Fleming gave Chick-fil-A the recipe. Literally, as in, he doesn't take any royalties for the sauce. Chick-fil-A took it national, renamed it, and now they go through more than 84 million packets a year. Shopping Mall Staple in the 1980s and 90s, the shopping mall was the place to hang, no matter what time of the year. Malls across the country were hugely popular going back into the 60s, so it's easy to see how opening the first Chick-fil-A in Atlanta's Greenbrier Mall was a great business decision. The idea behind Chick-fil-A was quite an innovation, and it opened at a time when malls were for shopping and eating happened elsewhere. Kathy noticed the shift to indoor mall shopping, especially in muggy Atlanta, and figured people would eat there as well. They did, and Kathy used the mall location to introduce the public to his unique chicken sandwich. It was popular, obviously, and from there, Chick-fil-A moved to other malls throughout the Southeast. It wasn't until 1986 that Chick-fil-A constructed their first standalone store. And while corporate experimented with drive through only locations, they ultimately decided the brick-and-mortar walk-in model was the way to go. Chick-fil-A continues to expand, so if there's not one near you, there probably will be soon. What's it really like to work for Chick-fil-A? Current and former Chick-fil-A employees from all different levels in the organization have plenty to say when it comes to employment with the company behind our favorite fried chicken sandwich. If you've been to Chick-fil-A more than once, you've probably picked up on the fact that they don't say you're welcome when dealing with customers. Instead, they say, My pleasure. It's kind of their trademark. While definitely a trait that sets them apart from other fast food employees, people who have spent time in the chicken trenches seem to agree that the phrase quickly becomes part of your vocab. One former Chick-fil-A manager who claims to have spent six years with the company revealed on Reddit that even three years after leaving, they still found themselves saying the statement. Lexi Stroud, another former chicken slinger who spent two years with the business, wrote about her experience on Odyssey. She said she, quote, hated having to use the phrase before adding just how much it wormed its way into her brain. She said, then it turned into the only way I would respond to the phrase thank you, whether or not I was at work or just having a conversation with friends. It took months to stop saying my pleasure after I stopped working at Chick-fil-A. Cell phones are firmly planted in modern society, and unfortunately, they've become an outlet for customer rudeness at restaurants. You've probably witnessed patrons allowing a phone or text conversation to take precedence over interacting with a restaurant employee who's trying to take a food order. You may even have been guilty of it yourself. It's become such a problem that even in 2006, some restaurants were putting up signs asking customers to refrain from phone use. By 2018, it was a common rule at many restaurants. Chick-fil-A hasn't resorted to that measure yet, but some of their employees sure wish they would. Brad, seven seconds, I'm grabbing you by the collar, your face is in the deep fryer. What? One employee confessed to Cosmopolitan, that's one of my biggest pet peeves when I'm working. They're on the phone talking, and I'm like, we can serve you down here, and nothing. It's like, hello, ma'am, we can serve you down here, but then they're still talking on their phone while I'm taking their order. Perhaps we should all take note of this. If we want to continue to get hot nuggets and friendly customer service, the least we could do is offer hardworking CFA employees our undivided and full attention. Mr. Zuckerberg, do I have your full attention? No. In 2012, Chick-fil-A found itself under a national media spotlight, not for its chicken, but because of interviews in which company president Dan Cathy discussed his views on marriage. Uh, I personally you know, express a view of support of the biblical definition of marriage. The interviews followed on the heels of a 2011 report that the company had given money to organizations considered anti-gay by various watchdog groups. Caught in the middle of it were thousands of store employees. Some workers were even harassed by angry customers. I don't believe corporations should be giving money to hateful really groups. Totally understand. The entire controversy and its blowback put employees in an uncomfortable position when all they wanted to do was serve up some waffle fries. One employee said, It was awkward. I knew about what was going on, but I didn't know any details. This must be awkward for all of you. <laughs> 
Chick-fil-A's conservative and religious foundation is basically common knowledge at this point. When your restaurant is closed every Sunday and is entangled in a national debate over same-sex marriage, people tend to stereotype employees. Is that fair? Of course not. But hey, that's human nature for ya. There are multiple threads on Reddit's Ask Me Anything section with former Chick-fil-A employees, and almost all of them have somebody asking if everyone who works there is super religious or dislikes gay people. Those assumptions couldn't be further from the truth. One former manager said, Personally, I am pro-LGBT, and I've never seen any instances of discrimination or anti-LGBT actions in my time at CFA. Another former manager said nobody they worked with, quote, seemed like they were homophobic, before adding, some employees we knew were openly gay. Numerous other employees and former employees on Reddit also said they had co-workers who were not religious. One employee even described themselves as an atheist. So while some CFA employees consider themselves religious, that's most certainly not the case for all CFA employees. And there's nothing that says it has to be. Sorry to burst your bubble, potential future Chick-fil-A employees, but the job isn't a free pass to a never-ending buffet of free chicken and waffle fries. Many employees do seem to get a discount or free meal on their shift, but the discount level seems to vary from store to store. It's not just food service employees that don't have access to unlimited chicken. The same goes for employees who work at the restaurant's Atlanta headquarters. Adresha Wimberly, a financial return consultant with the company, said in an interview, I can't walk into any Chick-fil-A restaurant, flash my badge, and they'll just toss a chicken sandwich across that counter. This doesn't mean employees don't have friends and family trying to constantly snag some free food, though. On the contrary, that seems to be a regular thing. Development and construction manager Patrick Davis said, If you get a chance to work here, be prepared to have your family members ask for Chick-fil-A coupons. Hey, can you really blame a person for trying to score some free nuggets every now and then when they have an inside connection? We sure would. Chick-fil-A's Polynesian sauce is one of the establishment's most popular condiments. Unfortunately, ordering the popular sauce seems to be a point of challenge for many Chick-fil-A loyalists. Maybe it's a lack of Pacific Islanders in Middle America, but the word is throwing people off, much to the amusement of CFA employees. The list of substitute names seems to run rather lengthy, according to former employee Lexi Stroud. She told Odyssey she recalled hearing customers call it, quote, paradise sauce and, quote, Poloponesian. People overall enjoy having a built-in day off from work every week to do whatever tickles their fancy. CFA founder S. Truett Cathy was a devout Southern Baptist and implemented the closed on Sundays policy that follows his Christian principles from day one. The purpose was to give employees a day off to worship or merely do whatever they wanted with the day. I'm ready to party with the best of them. The only time the company seems to ever deviate from this is when the community is in times of need. CFA employees have volunteered to feed first responders and volunteers following natural disasters and tragedies. They've also been known to fill hungry bellies when natural disasters hit. And Mother Nature definitely doesn't take off on Sundays. Employees are all for having the Sundays off, and what they do at that time seems to be a popular question. One employee on Reddit said sometimes they'll occasionally have team outings where the staff will hang out or management will buy them lunch. So even though we all go through chicken withdrawals when Sunday morning rolls around, CFA stands by its reason to remain closed one day per week. Company's president, Dan Cathy, even revealed that that rule will probably never change. And my brother and sister and I have, uh, have signed a covenant agreement that in our generation we're going to continue to be closed on Sunday. So People love Chick-fil-A's breakfast offerings, and one employee told Cosmopolitan that the rest of the day isn't exactly slow either. Lunchtime gets really busy. From about 1 to 4, there's a big rush. Then it picks up again from around 7 to 8. Basically, you might get a few hours in the dead of the afternoon where there isn't a drive through line around the block. Though there probably is still a line, maybe just a shorter one. Standing on your feet, making milkshakes by hand, and constantly taking orders isn't just exhausting. One former manager said it was, quote, the most stressful job they ever had, and putting in 60-hour work weeks was needed to keep up with store demands. If you're still not convinced of just how grueling the job can be, journalist Kathleen Elkins should set those doubts to rest. 
She spent one day shadowing the manager at the chain's Manhattan location. She said she didn't expect the workday to be easy, but she didn't expect it to be as tiring and exhausting as it was. By 10.30 a.m., after rolling biscuit dough, frying chicken, and assembling sandwiches, I was starting to peter out, and the lunch rush hadn't even started. If you're curious about just how busy the employees at any Chick-fil-A restaurant are, consider this fact. The company makes more money per restaurant than Starbucks, Subway, and the granddaddy of fast food, McDonald's, combined. When you factor in that each restaurant handbreads every piece of fried chicken, has hand-spun milkshakes, and freshly prepares the lemonade, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that employees must be ready to juggle multiple duties. In an interview with Cosmopolitan, one employee said that multitasking was the most difficult thing to get down, but it was definitely a vital skill. Now I have the hang of it and I'm just like, boom, 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 boom. Former employee Cameron Ford spent her high school years at the restaurant and reiterated this point, saying, If you aren't good at multitasking, you will quickly learn how to be better. Taking orders and serving customers, all while trying to communicate with your fellow co-workers, can certainly be both mentally and physically demanding. Or as Ford described it, quote, utter chaos. But you, you got hooked on disaster. Just because not even Chick-fil-A corporate employees have a special key to a secret vault of unlimited free chicken, that doesn't mean it's all work without reward. If you happen to work at the restaurant chain's posh Atlanta headquarters, you will have access to some pretty nice office perks. You may not get your run at anything on the menu, but employee Adresha Wimberly said that lunch is provided daily. Though chicken sandwiches are typically a part of the daily menu selection, it is not always a Chick-fil-A-centered lunch. It could be many different types of cuisine. The company seems to realize that it can't just be feeding employees chicken sandwiches all the time without some sort of balance, no matter how good they are. To offset the fried chicken lunches and delicious milkshakes, employees have access to an on-site gym and other healthy lifestyle utilities. Wimberly added, You can have a full-body composition analysis or get a personal trainer. There is a nutritionist on-site as well. Protests, phone-obsessed customers, and crazy lunch rushes aside, most Chick-fil-A employees at all levels seem to be happy with their time spent at the company. Andrea Liu told The Tab, I enjoyed my time working there because my coworkers were fun people to be around and the customers were generally very friendly. Liu started working there after her freshman year of high school and said she enjoyed trying new food combinations with team members. She also said she could always count on her coworkers to cheer her up if she had a bad customer interaction. Employees on the corporate side seem to back up the company's high job satisfaction rate on websites like Glassdoor.com, where it has nearly 4 out of 5 stars. Michael Lage, who has an MBA from Harvard, left his job as a brand strategist at Facebook to join the company. Lage told Forbes that people asked why he would leave Silicon Valley to quote, sell chicken, and he said it was all about the company culture. There is such a strong culture built on relationships and valuing one another. It brings out the best in people, fulfilling leadership potential and great business performance. If there's one thing the internet loves, it's a good fast food hack. The latest and greatest hack to hit the net involves Chick-fil-A's chicken nugget box. But genius as it may look, you have to wonder if it really works or if it could even be a bit dangerous. Here's the real reason why there's a hole in those nugget boxes. Feast your eyes on this life-altering discovery. The theory goes that the hole at the back of the Chick-fil-A nugget box exists so you can perch your nuggets on top of your soft drink. That way, you can hold your soda, your nuggets, and even your dipping sauces in one hand while your other hand is free to dunk, drive, and text to your heart's content. Just not all at the same time. Amazing! Or is it? Because this is the internet, responses to the hack ranged from genius to nope. One Chick-fil-A employee marveled, I've worked at CFA for four years. I've never seen such innovation. Another tweeter took the wind out of everyone's sails, saying, It's all fun and games until someone taps it on the side with a touch lighter than a feather. It does seem like a bit of a risky setup, doesn't it? That shit don't work on turns.
The naysayers of the internet weren't buying that the holes on the Chick-fil-A nugget box exist just so customers can poke their straws through them, and they took to Reddit to discuss the situation. One Redditor commented that the hack just didn't make any sense, saying, This does not explain the other two tabs. If you tried using them for this purpose, it would be off balance for the larger boxes and on small cup sizes. You have to rip the tab out just to do this, and Chick-fil-A does not do that to the boxes. Just because you can use the holes like this does not mean that this is why they are there. Score one for the power of logic. Another user offered up their theory on why the box has holes, saying, Always thought it was for air ventilation for the chicken pieces. A plausible explanation, to be sure. Nobody likes soggy chicken nuggets. Let's say that you still think this Chick-fil-A nugget box trick is genius. You don't care if your chin gets dipped in sauce while you sip your soda, as some brave online guinea pigs discovered. It's the ultimate driving while eating hack, right? We hate to be the bearer of bad news, but according to a 2014 study, those who are driving while eating are 3.6 times more likely to be involved in an accident than those who aren't. In fact, it's almost as dangerous as texting while driving. Bottom line, if you're going to test out the nugget box hack, it's probably best not to attempt it behind the wheel. So, it's pretty clear that the holes on the back of the Chick-fil-A nugget box were not designed for diners to poke their straws through them. So what's the real reason for the holes on the box? According to Chick-fil-A, the three punchable tabs indicate what's inside – nuggets, strips, or other. Chick-fil-A team members poke the appropriate tab so that their co-workers know what's inside the box without having to open it. Hmm, nifty! And what does Chick-fil-A think of the viral nugget box hack? It doesn't sound like they're on board with the stroke of genius that got the internet all riled up. A spokesperson told Today, Chick-fil-A is not recommending customers put the straw through the hole. That's just not what it's intended for. Bummer. But then again, you could always just invest in one of these. Snacky! Hold your drink and the snacks you love all in one hand. Party in a cup. If you're still hungry for a legit Chick-fil-A hack, try this. Pour a container of buffalo sauce directly into the nugget box, making sure those holes are all sealed up. Then close the lid and shake, 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 coating the nuggets. And just like that, you've hacked your way to Chick-fil-A buffalo-style nuggets. Without all the tedious dipping. You're welcome. If you've ever been curious why your car seems to steer itself into the Chick-fil-A parking lot every time you drive by one, it's the chicken. But while that's no mystery, you might be surprised by all the preparation and meticulous execution that goes into the poultry. This is exactly why that chicken tastes so darn good. It doesn't take a food scientist to figure out that a good chicken sandwich starts with a good piece of chicken. While some fast food giants have come under fire for the chicken they use, Chick-fil-A claims to use only the best chicken when creating its menu. According to the company's website, they refuse to ever use chicken meat that's been ground or separated. And all their chickens are raised cage-free and without any added steroids, hormones, or antibiotics. So here is the chicken you'll be oh, enjoying yeah. tonight. You have this information. This is fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, his name was Colin. Aside from that, Chick-fil-A chooses smaller chickens because they result in better tasting and juicier meat. According to David Farmer, Chick-fil-A's vice president of menu strategy and development, the industry has gone to a larger bird because if you're a chicken producer, it's more efficient to grow a bigger bird. But we don't like bigger birds. We like the texture that comes from the smaller bird. We want the tenderness of that meat. Chick-fil-A's classic chicken sandwich is a thing of simplistic beauty. It's a fried chicken cutlet with two pickles between two buttered buns. That's it, plain and simple with no fancy secret sauce required. One very important aspect that might seem like just a secondary add-on are those pickles. A Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich without the pickles really isn't a true Chick-fil-A sandwich. The pickles are made from cucumbers that are pickled for three days before finally making their way to the chicken sandwich, and thereby zapping it with the perfect amount of salty, briny flavor. For years, the internet has speculated that Chick-fil-A actually marinates its raw chicken in pickle juice before the breading process, although the company has never publicly confirmed this. This would make a lot of sense, though, because the salty pickle juice would result in a breakdown of the chicken proteins and produce a juicier piece of meat. One might think that any old grill would work fine when it comes to creating Chick-fil-A's grilled chicken sandwich, but that's not the case. Chick-fil-A wanted its chicken sandwich to taste like home-grilled chicken, and there simply wasn't a commercial grill on the market that could deliver that exact taste. So the company poured $50 million into developing its own special grill. How would we make it taste and look like it was truly cooked on a backyard grill? Even for a business that revolves around chicken, this type of investment might seem a bit like overkill. 
but Chick-fil-A wanted to ensure the 2014 relaunch of its grilled chicken sandwich was in a league of its own. This $50 million grill is patented by the company and uses a hydraulic system to close and lift the lid that covers the chicken ever so gently. This ensures that it doesn't squeeze out all the juices from the breast meat while cooking. Unlike a typical backyard grill, the Chick-fil-A grill cooks both sides of the chicken at once, while still leaving those appetizing grill marks. Chick-fil-A ensures that each chicken sandwich has the perfect amount of breading that doesn't come sliding off the meat after a single bite. After each piece of chicken is inspected to make sure it doesn't have any tears or glaring imperfections, it's dipped in a milk and egg wash mixture with the larger end of the breast going in first. The chicken is then laid into a bin with a flour mixture and completely buried. Then comes the hard part. Employees are encouraged to get on their tiptoes and use their body weight to firmly knead the breading mixture into the meat. As Alexa Griffith of Chick-fil-A's Corporate Cuisine puts it, to properly bread the chicken breast, one must tilt the whole body forward over the flour bin, lifting the heels and pushing down on the breast with an athlete's might to ensure the most dense and consistent application of the flour. Doing this to both sides of the chicken breast might be tiring, but it makes for a more evenly coated piece of breaded chicken that helps to create a crispy fried cutlet that can't be beat. A good bun can really elevate an already well-made chicken sandwich, while a bad bun can prompt diners to discard the bread altogether and opt for a knife and fork. Unsurprisingly, Chick-fil-A doesn't mess around when it comes to its buns. A small metal contraption holding melted butter with a roller is used for buttering up each bun before they hit the toaster. The buns are swiped over a roller and then dropped in a preset toaster to deliver a light toast on the buttered side. Because the bun is pre-buttered before it goes into the toaster, it helps in creating a delicious umami flavor in the bread that pairs well with the pickles and chicken. Once the buns are buttered and toasted and the pickles are added, the chicken cutlet is placed on the bun so that the three corners of the filet form a triangle over the sides of the bun. After all, nobody wants a lopsided chicken sandwich. Chick-fil-A is one of the most popular fast food chains in America, and that's true both with customers and employees, who generally report good experiences from working there. Good vibes aside, though, there are some decidedly unique rules Chick-fil-A workers have to follow. Here are a few of them. When you say thank you after getting your order from a Chick-fil-A employee, you won't hear your welcome in response. You'll actually hear the more formal my pleasure. This is not necessarily because whatever just occurred was enjoyed by the employee. It's rather because my pleasure is the response encouraged by Chick-fil-A. The practice of saying my pleasure instead of a you're welcome or no problem or sure thing champ started when the chain's founder was staying at a Ritz-Carlton hotel. A Ritz-Carlton employee used those two fateful words, and he was completely taken with the phrase, which he felt truly elevated his experience. He requested that my pleasure be used by employees of Chick-fil-A, and it eventually caught on and continues today. In fact, many former employees report it almost impossible to stop using my pleasure, even in locations where it's not always required. Christian even said my pleasure as he was changing our tire. <laughs> Until a few short years ago, visible tattoos were banned company-wide for Chick-fil-A employees, and workers were required to buy specialty sleeves or other garments that covered any tattoos visible on arms or other body parts. Today, the company has dispensed with an official policy banning visible tattoos, but they are still prohibited at many Chick-fil-A franchise locations. And while not expressly prohibited by overall policy, a look through comments from Chick-fil-A employees on job sites reveal a culture generally opposed to visible ink. That said, many locations are relatively flexible about the unofficial policy, so a tattoo is no reason not to apply for a position working at Chick-fil-A. But if you also have dental or body modifications, or if you wear strong perfumes or excessive makeup, you might want to alter your style before applying to work at the franchise. If you rock a cherished beard or a great goatee, you'll need to look elsewhere than Chick-fil-A for your next job. Chick-fil-A employees are not allowed to have any facial hair beyond a neatly trimmed mustache, such as is permitted by military regulations. A person's mustache must not be wider than his mouth and can't be long and thick, and sideburns also have to be trimmed. And a team member appearance memo from a Chick-fil-A on Fulton Street in New York City goes so far as to dictate that any team member presenting improper facial hair at work, quote, must go buy a razor and shave before being clocked in or be sent home. Many Chick-fil-A team member handbooks contain this rule. False fingernails are not allowed in customer service areas or food preparation areas. So that means, in effect, that false nails can't be worn anywhere at work. 
And it makes sense for a restaurant to limit something like large acrylic nails that can easily detach and risk falling into a customer's food. Chick-fil-A rules do, however, go beyond state law and do indeed concern style and self-expression. Most locations do not allow any nail polish beyond solid-colored polish or a French manicure. It's important to note that Chick-fil-A is not the only restaurant with this policy, because there are health code requirements in many places that relate to the potential of polish chipping during food prep. If you want to work at a Chick-fil-A, you had better either be a very polite person or be able to act like a very polite person for an entire shift multiple days per week. Any lack of friendly positivity is not allowed for a Chick-fil-A employee. The entire corporate culture of Chick-fil-A is built around unflagging politeness, and many employees report that being polite has to start right from your initial job interview. One former Chick-fil-A employee who left a posting regarding the interview process said, My best advice is to be yourself, be polite, and dress nice. CFA is a customer-oriented company, so make sure you can show them that, saying yes ma'am, yes sir, no thank you, my pleasure, etc. If you work at a Chick-fil-A and you want to get your hair dyed, that's no problem at all. Assuming, that is, you get your hair dyed black, brown, blonde, red, or some variety of these naturally occurring hair colors. That's because unnatural hair dye colors are banned for Chick-fil-A employees. That means no blues, pinks, greens, purples, and so on, even if they are just streaks of color highlighting your natural hair, and easy on the styling, too. The ban on hair dye at Chick-fil-A seems to be a product of the company's conservative culture. The reserved style required by the rules of the restaurant may dissuade some people from even applying to work there, while in other cases it may force employees to conceal their own sense of style or even sense of self while at work. For many people, those delicious Chick-fil-A waffle-cut french fries are as much a draw as Chick-fil-A's vaunted chicken sandwiches. And many of those fry lovers would love to get their french fries well done. When you ask for your fries well done, this means fried twice. As in, a Chick-fil-A employee would literally resubmerge your already finished french fries back in hot cooking oil and deep fry them again. This results in a darker, crunchier, and all-around more delightful food. This used to be a favorite semi-secret menu hack for many people. But sadly, employees at many Chick-fil-A restaurants are now banned from giving customers well-done fries, even when asked. The main reason they can no longer give fries well done is simply that refrying french fries takes too long, slowing down progress in the kitchen and slowing fulfillment of orders. Owning and operating a string of fast food restaurants can make you a very wealthy person indeed. If you work hard and you have a spot of good luck, owning one Chick-fil-A franchise can make somewhat flush as well. But you'd better not try to expand your fast food restaurant empire beyond that one location, because that's against the rules. Chick-fil-A franchise owners may only have one Chick-fil-A restaurant at any time, and no other business ventures. This rule forces Chick-fil-A franchisees to put all of their time and energy into their one location, and it also means that no franchisee will develop significant power over the larger chain. So while Chick-fil-A restaurants may be famously affordable, though challenging to acquire, know that you will almost surely not expand beyond one restaurant if you were looking to get into the chicken-centric fast food business. Chick-fil-A is famously closed on Sunday, and unfortunately, no craving for chicken can hack that schedule. When a restaurant is as popular as Chick-fil-A, why in the world would they close a whopping 52 days a year? It turns out the answer is a little more complicated than you may have thought. It's human nature to want what we can't have. This explains why you probably crave Chick-fil-A the most on the one day you can't have it, Sunday. Is this psychological phenomenon the real reason Chick-fil-A closes one day a week? In a word, no. But it probably doesn't hurt to encourage a little Monday afternoon spike in traffic. It's my belief that our food tastes just a little bit better on Monday when we're closed on Sunday. According to Restaurant Business Magazine, Chick-fil-A's once-a-week closure helps in giving a perception of limited supply. But there are other important ways that the policy works to the company's advantage. For one, it's respectable. Restaurant Business explains that it shows that the company is willing to miss out on some revenue to give franchisees and employees a guaranteed day off each week, and in turn allows the franchisees to use it as a perk in recruiting. Happier employees means better business, right? 
All in all, it's a win for the company, and an even bigger win for those somewhat literate cows. Chick-fil-A is serious about the whole not opening on Sundays thing. Even the Chick-fil-A restaurants and football stadiums refuse to make exceptions for special Sunday events like Super Bowl Sunday, which is arguably the most popular Sunday of the year. If Chick-fil-A won't open for Super Bowl Sunday, even in the stadium where the actual game is being played, you'd think that all Sundays would be off the table, no matter the reason. But the restaurant has made a few exceptions. Over the years, a handful of incidents have prompted Chick-fil-A to fire up those deep fryers. But unfortunately, the circumstances behind the openings haven't been so great. Basically, if they're serving sandwiches on a Sunday, you can be sure that something pretty bad has probably happened. As a company spokesperson told Business Insider, while Chick-fil-A is always closed on Sunday, our restaurants open occasionally to serve communities in need. Examples of the restaurants serving communities in need include prepping and donating meals for the rescue teams and evacuees of North Carolina's destructive Hurricane Florence in 2018, feeding thousands of hungry, stranded passengers at Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport in 2017 after the power went out indefinitely, and feeding first responders of the Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting in 2016. The moral of the story? Chick-fil-A has no interest in profiting from Sundays, but they do have an interest in lending a helping hand and a delicious chicken sandwich. It's no secret that the founder of Chick-fil-A, Truett Cathy, was a devout Christian. After all, the company's website even says its corporate purpose is to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is entrusted to us and to have a positive influence on all who come into contact with Chick-fil-A. It shouldn't come as too much of a surprise, then, that Kathy's closed-on-Sunday policy originally stemmed from his religious beliefs, including one particular Bible verse. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do no work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no work. According to a Chick-fil-A press release from 2009, Truett Cathy believes that being closed on Sunday says two important things to people. One, that there must be something special about the way Chick-fil-A people view their spiritual life. And two, that there must be something special about how Chick-fil-A feels about its people. More recently, however, the company seems to have walked back from this explanation a bit in favor of a slightly less Christian-centric one. If you visit Chick-fil-A's website today, you won't find a lengthy explanation of Truett Cathy's Christian beliefs and how they influenced his decision to enact his closed-on-Sunday policy. What you will find is a brief blurb which reads, Our founder, Truett Cathy, made the decision to close on Sundays in 1946 when he opened his first restaurant in Hapeville, Georgia. Truett saw the importance of closing on Sundays so that he and his employees could set aside one day to rest and worship if they choose, a practice we uphold today. As Kathy's son, Dan Kathy, explained in a 2009 ABC News interview. He figured if he didn't like working on Sunday that other people didn't either. He said, I, I don't want to ask people, other people to do that which I'm not willing to do myself. Fair is fair. Unfortunately, there's no super secret Chick-fil-A location that's open on Sundays, but there is a way to ensure you're prepared for a Sunday craving, as long as nuggets or chicken strips can do the trick. Chick-fil-A conveniently sells trays of chilled nuggets and strips, which you can purchase on a Saturday and reheat on a Sunday. And before you ask, of course it comes complete with all your favorite sauces. What good is a tray of nuggets without that sweet, tangy Chick-fil-A sauce anyway? Of course, oven-reheated, deep-fried tenders or nuggets are never as good as the real thing served fresh from bubbling oil, but at least it's something. While the company does offer their entire menu through their catering division, it's probably safe to say that you're better off skipping the sandwiches and waffle fries if you're planning to wait a day to eat them. Unless soggy buns and limp fries are your thing. No judgment here. Everyone knows the Chick-fil-A basics. They're as well known for their controversies and their always cheerful staff as they are for their chicken. And they made headlines for a lot of good reasons, too. Their popularity is only growing as they expand farther and farther across the U.S. So what should you know before you head there again? Every now and then, the chain does away with the beloved item, like their carrot and raisin salad. The restaurant regularly upgrades the menu, and 2016 saw a swing to more healthy options. In came the egg white grill, and out went the beloved but less than healthy cinnamon cluster. To many, it was a tragedy. But the melancholy Chick-fil-A fan can take heart that the powers that be are as helpful as they can be when discontinuing an item. They have a Hall of Fame dedication on their website to the fallen foods. 
and to help mend some broken hearts, they went as far as providing the coleslaw recipe gratis to soothe the faithful. Now you can make at least one of your long-time but long-gone favorites right in your own kitchen. Thanks, Chick-fil-A! Many a restaurant has tried to emulate Chick-fil-A, but not all copies are of the traditional quick-serve variety. Famed chef David Chang has quite the affinity for fast food, and decided to take a shot at making his own recreation of the famous Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. At his fairly quick-serve restaurant Fuku, Chang went all in and made a restaurant specializing in chicken and featured a spicy chicken sandwich just like the ones from Chick-fil-A. Make no mistake, Chang has spoken publicly about drawing inspiration from Chick-fil-A. So how does it hold up against the original, according to taste tests? Well, there are plenty of sites out there that have compared the two, and the final verdict is really up to you. Just remember, Chick-fil-A has a huge advantage. It isn't carrying a New York City price tag of around $8. There's a reason people like to call Chick-fil-A healthy fast food. And while it might be better for you than other places, it's still fast food. One thing that even the most ardent label reader can't deny is that Chick-fil-A is indeed making strides to improve their product and make it more accessible to those with allergies. In 2017, they introduced a gluten-free bun, available with their grilled chicken. The bun comes pre-sealed to avoid cross-contamination, and you have to build it yourself. Chick-fil-A has also taken steps to remove dyes and high-fructose corn syrup from their standard buns and switch from iodized salt to sea salt on their oh-so-popular fries in 2017. In a continuing effort to improve, they pledged to only use cage-free eggs by 2026, reduce sodium across the menu, and stop using chickens raised with antibiotics. Rarely has a restaurant become so synonymous with a phrase that wasn't some catchy commercial line, but CFA pulled it off with just a simple courtesy after they hand you your food. And there's your own sweet tea. My pleasure. And there's your Coke. My pleasure. So where did it come from? Chick-fil-A's version of the origin comes from founder Truett Cathy. Upon a visit to a Ritz-Carlton, the kindly Cathy thanked a Ritz employee who responded with a simple, my pleasure. More heartfelt than a typical you're welcome, the phrase stuck with him. The rest, as they say, is history. S. Truett Cathy may have opened Chick-fil-A by himself, but when he founded the chain's predecessor, The Dwarf House, he had a partner in his brother Ben Cathy. The brothers first opened The Dwarf Grill, which later became The Dwarf House. Just a few years later, on a Saturday after his shift at The Dwarf, Ben and his brother Horace planned a flight to Chattanooga. Tragically, they never arrived. Their plane crashed in Dalton, Georgia, just about 35 miles south of Chattanooga. And in a moment, Truett lost two brothers and his business partner. Amazingly, he trudged on and less than 20 years later spun out his first Chick-fil-A. It's easier than you might think to make Chick-fil-A's chicken at home. There's a plethora of copycat recipes out there, and while a lot of people assume that since there's a pickle served with a chicken, the secret marinade is pickle juice. It's not. The ingredients have nary a reference to pickle juice, and what you're tasting is just plain old vinegar. There's also MSG and a milk wash. And now you know enough to make your own when the cravings hit on Sunday. You want some chicken with your pickle sandwich? When it comes to Chick-fil-A, ask and you shall receive. One South Carolina resident rolled up to her local restaurant with high hopes for an insane amount of pickles, as requested on her order. However, the toppings she was met with were far more than the standard handout of two pickle chips that usually comes atop an original chicken sandwich. In fact, she was greeted by a whopping 43 pickles when she opened the damp sandwich bag. Looking back at the attention to detail her order received, the woman said, It made me smile and laugh. She also said that she had envisioned what likely went down behind the scenes as the employees learned of her request. I pictured the Chick-fil-A employee seeing my order and saying, I got you, while grabbing a handful of pickles. Naturally, the internet went crazy, as it does, and it's fair to guess that more than a few pickle-loving copycats attempted the same feat. Every Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is supposed to come with two pickle slices, although sometimes the unthinkable happens and this expectation is not met. Such was the case recently in Tyler, Texas, when a disgruntled customer let the world know that only one pickle slice topped their sandwich. The pickle mishap caused an uproar among East Texas residents on Facebook. Only one thing. You forgot the pickles! <gasps> Reportedly, the fast food giant immediately took action to rectify the situation. It only makes sense that the chicken chain takes pride in their pickles. According to Reader's Digest, Chick-fil-A makes it a key point to top off each sandwich with two pickles that are marinated for three days before making it into the meal assembly line. Chick-fil-A even created a press packet that emphasized the difference the two pickles make when it comes to enjoying their signature products. In addition to stressing the importance of the two-pickle system, the packet included a video of the farm where the cucumbers come from. I love farming and I love my family. Eat the pickle and live longer. 
When a diner deviates from this fundamental aspect of the Chick-fil-A experience, apparently the pickle floodgates open, and anyone can expect their sandwich to get filled with the barrel's worth of pickles. Clearly, people feel strongly about these ever-so-crucial pickles. And in the comment section of the 43 Pickle post on Facebook, several social media users weighed in with their thoughts and admiration of the spectacle. One person wrote, Ugh, I need to know this location. I've tried having them do this, and they gave me one extra pickle on top of the two they gave me. Another commenter added, This is what I mean when I say extra pickles. Pickles. Just as there are fans of a plethora of pickles, there are also those who are turned off by such a thing. Over on Reddit, Chick-fil-A pickles have divided diners. For example, some patrons can't stand the topping. One particular Redditor, who claimed to be a former employee of the chain, said, I'd say like 10% ask for no pickles. It's pretty small, but big enough that it isn't weird or unexpected. I personally ask for no pickles. However, others have said, pickles belong in the garbage, not on a chicken sandwich. If you side with the pro pickles camp, try pushing your luck next time you stop in for a chicken sandwich and see if you can beat the 43 pickle record. Chick-fil-A has a ton of fans, and those fans tend to love everything about it. But the restaurant is also hugely controversial. Let's take an in-depth look at just why some places just don't want Chick-fil-A on their doorstep. The San Antonio City Council made national headlines in March 2019 when they voted on what new restaurants would be coming to the San Antonio International Airport. NBC says that while they welcomed other eateries with open arms, they gave Chick-fil-A a very, very swift kick out the door. Some people were thrilled with their decision. The LGBT community is excited that the city council has decided to look for businesses that support all Americans for our airport. Just two weeks later, strangely similar headlines were popping up again, as yet another airport objected to welcoming Chick-fil-A. Buffalo Niagara International Airport scrapped Chick-fil-A due to the restaurant's, quote, long history of supporting and funding anti-LGBTQ organizations. NBC reported that New York state lawmakers were proudly vocal about supporting the decision. And they weren't the only ones taking a stand against Chick-fil-A. After students at Ryder University voted Chick-fil-A as their top choice to be added to the university's renovations, the school removed the restaurant from their survey, citing Chick-fil-A's perceived anti-inclusion stance. I'm kind of upset about it. I personally like Chick-fil-A. And there are other protests and boycotts going on, too. When the Pittsburgh Marathon announced they were partnering with Chick-fil-A to sponsor the Pittsburgh Kids Marathon and the Kids of Steel program in 2016, Trib Live reported the Pittsburgh Public School Board voted unanimously to oppose the partnership. Resolution notes that Chick-fil-A has expressed views contrary and in conflict with the district's non-discrimination policies. Even existing Chick-fil-A locations have felt pressure from their host cities and campuses. In 2012, Elon University in North Carolina went to its food vendor asking to get Chick-fil-A off the campus and find another option for students, the Huffington Post reported. And they weren't alone. In 2016, Huffington Post reported that Georgia's Emory University first distanced themselves from the ultra-conservative beliefs of the chain, then finally removed the restaurant. Even college campuses in traditionally conservative states have seen protests and petitions to get Chick-fil-A off school grounds, says HuffPo. The University of Southern Mississippi, the University of North Florida, and the University of South Alabama all have had student movements organized against Chick-fil-A, alongside more traditionally liberal schools like New York University. After San Antonio voted to block Chick-fil-A from the airport, Councilman Roberto Trevino said it was because the city didn't have room, quote, for a business with a legacy of anti-LGBTQ behavior. The city's mayor, Ron Nuremberg, was also opposed to having the restaurant in the airport, but for an entirely different reason. Ask you, have you ever tried to buy waffle fly fries on a Sunday? They're closed. 15% of sales generated in the airport come on a Sunday. Chick-fil-A responded to the decision by pointing out they already had 32 stores in San Antonio. And it was Democratic Assemblyman Sean Ryan from Buffalo, New York, that explained why there was a difference between restaurants set up on a city street versus one built in an airport. He said, The views of Chick-fil-A do not represent our state or the western New York community, and businesses that support discrimination have no place operating in taxpayer-funded public facilities. And when Ryder University blocked the chicken chain, they weren't shy about saying why they had done it either. According to their official statements via CBS Philly, the university's president said, Chick-fil-A was removed as one of the options based on the company's record, widely perceived to be in opposition to the LGBTQ community. The Kathy family has done a lot of good in the world. The Forbes article titled The Cult of Chick-fil-A starts out by interviewing a Chick-fil-A worker who grew up in the group foster home Chick-fil-A founder S. Truett Kathy founded. But that's not what the bands are about. The bands are about other beliefs firmly held by the late Kathy, an evangelical Southern Baptist and his family. The Bible tells a lot about how to operate our business if we just read it and apply it. He has also said that he prefers to have employees who are married because they're more productive than unmarried workers. 
And when it came to recruiting new franchisees, Kathy didn't just interview prospective owners, but their family and children as well. And if those interviews revealed something he didn't like, he said he would fire an employee who, quote, has been sinful. If that sounds like an uncomfortable amount of scrutiny put on employees' personal lives, some of them have said as much, too. In 2012, Truett Cathy's son, Dan Cathy, spoke with the biblical recorder. That's what really kicked off all the fire and brimstone. Cathy was asked about his stance on marriage and whether or not all the rumors were true. CNN gave a brief recap of his answer. He said that he was, quote, guilty as charged in his stance against same-sex marriage. He also said Chick-fil-A was supporting the, quote, biblical definition of the family unit and said that Chick-fil-A was based on biblical principles, asking God and pleading with God to give us wisdom on decisions we make about people and the programs and the partnerships we have. Just prior to that interview, Kathy had gone on a radio show and made the following comment. I think we're inviting God's judgment on our nation when we shake our fist at him and say, you know, we know better than you as to what constitutes a marriage. Despite the backlash the company had received, in a 2018 interview with WSB-TV, Kathy expressed the exact same beliefs. He said, uh, I personally you know, express a view of support of the biblical definition of marriage. Lots of companies have divisions and offshoots organized for their charitable giving. Chick-fil-A has the Windshape Foundation, which was founded by Truett Cathy in 1984. Their mission statement says the organization provides meaningful experiences that expose life-altering hope and truth. That's pretty vague, and in March 2019, Think Progress released what they found after they took a deep dive into just where Chick-fil-A's donations, most of which were funneled through Windshape, were going. In 2017, three groups were given more than $1.8 million by Chick-fil-A and their charitable giving. The largest recipient was the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, a sports-based organization that includes this in their quote. Purity Statement The Bible is clear in teaching on sexual sin, including sex outside of marriage and homosexual acts. Neither constitute an alternative lifestyle acceptable to God. Other recipients include the Paul Anderson Youth Home, which teaches that gay marriage directly opposes the wishes of God, and the Salvation Army, which has had its share of anti-LGBTQ doctrine. A list Vox assembled also included the Georgia Family Council and a company called Exodus International, which closed its doors in 2013 after much scrutiny and decades of promoting controversial conversion therapy. The mission of Exodus was to help people who were same-sex attracted to not act on that. According to Vox, Chick-fil-A promised to stop participating in the marriage debate, and some groups even said the restaurant would stop funding anti-LGBTQ groups after the fallout from Kathy's comments in 2012. But they haven't, and there's nothing that's clear-cut about Chick-fil-A's charitable giving. Organizations backed by Windshape have said that they're simply youth and family-focused organizations. According to LGBT organization Campus Pride, Chick-fil-A had dropped the most divisive anti-LGBT groups from their list of donation recipients including the Family Research Council, which was classified by the Southern Poverty Law Center as a, quote, designated hate group. The Advocate has reported that Chick-fil-A had found a bit of a loophole for donations. It was Dan Cathy that was doing the donating and fundraising, not the Windshape Foundation, to a fundraiser for the Marriage and Family Foundation. That organization was also founded by the Cathy family and focused on lowering divorce rates and protecting the institution of marriage from decline. Cathy family aside, what's Chick-fil-A's official stance? After they were pushed out of the consideration as a sponsor for the Pittsburgh Kids Marathon and the Kids of Steel program in 2016, Chick-fil-A responded in a statement shared by CBS Pittsburgh, which read, Our restaurants welcome everyone, and we have no policy of discrimination against any group. We do not have a political or social agenda. According to Business Insider, the chain has come a long, long way in moving past the controversy their founding family's comments have made. Uh, I've been able to reach out to, to people in the gay community and sit down and have some incredibly wonderful dialogue with them. Chick-fil-A has also successfully opened in liberal-leaning cities, including New York, Portland, and the Seattle area. Sales figures are on the rise, and they've done it in part by warning their franchisees not to talk about any beliefs about traditional marriage they might have. As a corporation, they're trying to promote a more inclusive image, even though that means still choosing very carefully when it comes to the church groups and community activism they get involved in. According to Peter Kersenow of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, there's a huge problem with places banning Chick-fil-A on the basis of their anti-gay marriage stance. In a letter he wrote to the Niagara Frontier Transportation Authority regarding Buffalo's decision to follow San Antonio's example, he said it was nothing short of discrimination because there was a lack of evidence that Chick-fil-A had ever actually discriminated against someone based on their sexual orientation. They just said it went against their traditional Christian beliefs. 
And according to CNN, Texas's Attorney General Ken Paxton condemned San Antonio's ban on Chick-fil-A, saying it was discriminatory. He called for an investigation into whether or not the council's decision to prevent Chick-fil-A from opening was even legal. And he reached out to the U.S. Department of Transportation, too. USA Today adds that other groups, like the First Liberty Institute, a religious liberty-focused law firm, were also condemning the action as religious discrimination. While San Antonio and Buffalo made it clear that Chick-fil-A wasn't going to be welcome in their airports, San Jose, California had a different solution. According to the Mercury News, San Jose originally approved Chick-fil-A's presence in its airport in March 2018. By the time people started to protest in the wake of the news coming out of Buffalo and San Antonio, their new Chick-fil-A was only about a month away from opening. What's a city council to do? Former County Supervisor Ken Yeager, who's currently the head of the Bay Area Municipal Elections Committee and is the city's first openly gay elected official, said that instead of going anti-Chick-fil-A, he'd prefer to see transgender and rainbow flags posted all around it as a, quote, counter-signal to the discrimination supported by Chick-fil-A. Others on the council got on board, too, endorsing their support for adding flags to the airport and declining to extend their contract from 2026 to 2028 citing their Sunday closures as the reason. But council members also made it very, very clear what they were going for, adding that they were going to promote the hiring of LGBT employees and make it the, quote, gayest Chick-fil-A in the country. It's also worth noting that when push comes to shove, some Chick-fil-A restaurants have broken corporate rules to lend a helping hand where it was needed most, even when it was the LGBTQ community that needed help. One of the most defining traits of the company is that they have always closed on Sunday. And it's just one of those unbreakable rules. But in 2016, a Chick-fil-A in Orlando opened on a Sunday to hand out free food to first responders, blood donors, and law enforcement working at the Pulse nightclub shooting. An official spokesperson for the company said that yes, there are occasions when they will open on Sunday to provide community aid. And even though the Huffington Post said this gesture was particularly surprising given their history of standing firmly against marriage equality and the fact that Pulse was a gay nightclub, but Chick-fil-A said they weren't looking for any kind of recognition. They simply wanted to do what was right. And on that Sunday, this is what was right. For those who love potatoes, there's nothing more satisfying than one sliced to perfection and served as a french fry. Now imagine those crispy, thin-cut potatoes, but even better. Is that even possible? According to Chick-fil-A, the answer is yes, and they're called waffle fries. The A in Chick-fil-A stands for grade A quality. That means that the Atlanta-based restaurant wants nothing less than perfection in the food each location serves to its customers daily. This is especially important for waffle fries, the number one selling item on the menu. Producing a mouth-watering waffle fry means not settling for mediocre potatoes. That's why Chick-fil-A sources all of its spuds from the states of Washington and Oregon, particularly from farms down in the Columbia River Basin, where they care just as much about Chick-fil-A's customers as the restaurant itself. Chick-fil-A takes great care in choosing its suppliers, ensuring they follow very strict quality and safety standards. Creating the country's best quality potatoes doesn't come easy. From watering the land, tending the soil, all the way through digging, so much care goes into growing the spud that will one day become a Chick-fil-A waffle fry. It's just rewarding to know that we did our part and that's going to put food in someone's belly uh, down the road. What is it about the soil in the Columbia River Basin that makes it such an ideal place to grow potatoes? The answer, it turns out, is none other than volcanic ash. One of the most notable American volcanoes is southwest Washington's Mount St. Helens, which had a major eruption in 1980. This eruption disintegrated more than 230 square miles and spewed over 540 million tons of ash. To put that into perspective, a midsize SUV weighs about two tons. After the eruption, mineral and nutrient deposits that were in the rock of Mount St. Helens were then deposited within the surrounding basin. When ash is periodically added into existing soil, it actually improves soil quality, maintains moisture, and helps with productivity. It's crazy to think that such devastation can provide any benefit, but in the case of potatoes and the waffle fries they eventually become, it can. There's something unique about Chick-fil-A's waffle fries. You probably don't notice it with your first bite, as you're probably distracted by the crispy outside texture and large surface area that can hold a records amount of gourmet dipping sauces. But by the time you get to the end, you'll see it. Those last few pieces in your waffle fry order are missing something. The holes. But why would Chick-fil-A put you through that kind of torture and turn something so beautiful into something that looks like an unbaked potato chip on one side? According to the chain, the answer is simple. It's because they use real potatoes, and since no two potatoes are the same, you might end up with a few of what they call potato skin fries. 
Some customers may find it hard to grasp, but the no-hole potato skin fry is a Chick-fil-A staple. It comes with the territory. So, the next time you order up a side of waffle fries, know that you'll most likely come across a fry butt or two. Timing is everything when it comes to the perfection of Chick-fil-A's waffle fries. If you've ever burned a piece of toast or pulled chicken off the grill a little too early, you know that being a little off on the timing can mean disaster. How do you want that cooked? Run to a crisp or bloody as hell. For a restaurant that serves hundreds of bags of waffle fries a day, consistency is important. Luckily, Chick-fil-A has the cooking of its most popular item down to a science. Once the frozen fries are poured into the fry basket, they're then lowered into the fryer. At this point, the fry cook only has to press the waffle fry button on the machine to get the process started. The button is set to cook for two minutes. It's really that simple. After those two minutes, the fries are pulled from the fryer crisp, golden, and ready to be seasoned. Chick-fil-A founder S. Truett Cathy said, Food is essential to life, therefore make it good. There's no doubt that Chick-fil-A waffle fries are good, but it might surprise you to know how simple they actually are. There are just two main ingredients Chick-fil-A uses to bring out that monumental flavor of these crispy on the outside and tender on the inside treats. Waffle fries are poured into a fry basket and dipped in canola oil when cooking. Once the timer goes off, the fries are shaken of all excess oil. After the oil and before the serving comes one final ingredient, a touch of salt. Chick-fil-A uses two pumps of sea salt from its special salt shaker to sprinkle over the waffle fries. Then the fries are tossed around with that perfect amount of salt to bring out the real potato flavor in each bite. Aside from the canola oil and the salt, there are a few chemical compounds for color retention and anti-foaming, but that's pretty minimal compared to other fast food fries. What do you really know about Chick-fil-A's breakfast? You know, aside from the fact that your day wouldn't be the same without it. From recipes that didn't make the cut to hacks that'll score you free food, here's all the behind-the-scenes info you need to know. If your mouth starts watering at the mere mention of a Chick-fil-A biscuit, you definitely aren't all alone. Per the official Chick-fil-A blog, The Chicken Wire, 119 million biscuits were ordered in 2019. These light and fluffy butter pillows make waking up early a worthwhile trade-off. You can never have too much have you ever stopped to consider why they're so gosh darn delicious, though? Well, for starters, every single biscuit is handmade. No frozen dough shall be served to you. Instead, Chick-fil-A employees commit to a labor of love. The blog explains that team members arrive at 5.30 a.m. to begin hand-rolling and baking Chick-fil-A's tasty biscuits. The process for each batch of biscuits takes around 30 minutes, and they continue baking fresh biscuits throughout the morning until the restaurant stops serving their breakfast menu. Further confirmation of this fact can be found via CNBC's Kathleen Elkins, who shattered an employee at one of Chick-fil-A's busiest New York City locations in 2018. Elkins tagged along with the location's assistant director, beginning at the bright and early hour of 6 a.m. During that time, the reporter confirmed fresh biscuits were painstakingly mixed, rolled, shaped, and baked by the restaurant's resident biscuit master. According to Elkins, it is a process that is at once, quote, simple but laborious. For those of us who occasionally like to eat fast food for breakfast, health isn't necessarily the deciding factor. But when you're pressed for time, or let's be real, just craving a chicken biscuit, Chick-fil-A is definitely the answer. And hey, it's not as though you can't be health conscious when you choose a Chick-fil-A breakfast. In fact, you might actually be surprised to learn that there are an impressive 10 pairings on the breakfast menu that come in at under 400 calories. Yes, really! The Chicken Wire has detailed precisely what to order if you're trying to stay on track with your diet. Take, for instance, a bacon, egg, and cheese muffin with a medium fruit cup, and a large coffee. That combo will only set you back 360 calories while also delivering 17 grams of protein. Another popular option? You can get a four-count of the beloved chicken minis along with a large cup of hot coffee for only 350 calories. Even Chick-fil-A's buttery biscuits aren't off-limits to calorie counters. Just limit yourself to one, then pair it with a medium fruit cup and a small diet lemonade. Since adding breakfast to its menu way back in 1986, Chick-fil-A has really hit its stride with its early morning offerings. Sure, over time they added things like a breakfast burrito, chicken minis, the Greek yogurt parfait, and a fresh fruit cup, but really, the restaurant rarely veers away from its core breakfast menu items. When it does, you better believe people are going to take notice. For instance, in 2016, the restaurant decided to enter the more health-conscious breakfast menu market by launching a new breakfast sandwich, the Egg White Grill. At the time, Chick-fil-A shared their motivation for making the change, stating they were looking for an innovative 
innovative and delicious way to satisfy its guests. The company called the Egg White Grill an ideal option for their, quote, health-conscious consumer base. While adding just one sandwich might seem like a relatively insignificant move in the grand scheme of things, the menu addition made headlines. It's no wonder, either. It marked Chick-fil-A's first new addition to the breakfast menu in six years, which is pretty remarkable. I'm impressed by you. Take a journey back in time, if you will, to 1946. The city was Atlanta, Georgia, and the restaurant was called the Dwarf Grill. Bet you thought we were going to say Chick-fil-A, right? Well, to be clear, they're essentially the same thing. Although, to add an extra layer of confusion, the Dwarf Grill was eventually renamed as the Dwarf House. Dwarf House, a classic diner-style restaurant, was the first restaurant opened by late Chick-fil-A founder S. Truett Cathy. Today, Dwarf House still serves up the original chicken sandwich customers have come to know and love. However, this particular restaurant does it from a distinctively quirky red roofed building. In addition to the famed chicken sandwich, patrons can order more traditional diner fare like burgers, mac and cheese, and cornbread. As if a Chick-fil-A diner wasn't proof enough that dreams do come true, there's more. A blogger who goes by the name Jimbo X chronicled his trip to the Woodstock, Georgia Dwarf House location, which features, wait for it, a breakfast buffet. This is it. All you can eat. <laughs> Jimbo X reports that on the day of his visit, there were only nine breakfast items to choose from, and while the variety wasn't immense, the quality was. Life can deliver some pretty cruel blows. And by life, we clearly mean Chick-fil-A. Sometimes you aren't even aware of just how unfair life can be. Until that is, Chick-fil-A posts a blog revealing a few hard truths about the evolution of its breakfast. In March 2019, The Chicken Wire interviewed Chick-fil-A chef Christy Cook to find out if there were any memorable recipes over the years that fell short of earning a spot on the menu. And boy, were there ever. Arguably the most memorable of which was the ill-fated biscuit cinnamon roll. In case you're wondering, yes, Chick-fil-A biscuit dough was rolled in cinnamon butter and sugar and then cut and baked and drenched in sweet, delicious icing. Sounds pretty drool-worthy. So what went wrong? According to Cook, the recipe was simple but still a little too complex in the end. She added, Customers loved how it tasted, but because we couldn't prepare it fresh in our restaurant kitchens each morning and get it right every time, we cut it. If you've never experienced the wonder of chicken minis, you're totally missing out. Here's the breakdown for you. This breakfast dish consists of bite-sized Chick-fil-A nuggets nestled inside of warm, fluffy mini yeast rolls coated in a delicious honey butter spread. You can order them in a 4-pack or a 10-pack, and you'll want to be sure to order enough to get you through the entire day. Or even better, adulthood. Unfortunately, these tasty little fellows must be ordered during breakfast hours, meaning you have to stock up on them by 10.30 a.m. or you're basically out of luck. At least, some of us are. Others among us clearly have all the luck because in select cities, chicken minis are occasionally served all day long. Chick-fil-A announced the good news in May 2018, noting the item would be available all day in Tampa, Florida and Little Rock, Arkansas beginning June 4th. While it seems the promotion only lasted for a few short months, ending in August 2018, the fact that it even existed at all suggests that Chick-fil-A could bring it back at any time in the future. If all else fails, you could always order a chicken minis tray in either a 20 or 40 count. Go big or go home. Chick-fil-A's Chicken Biscuit has a devoted fan base who make it one of the most in-demand items on the menu. Can you really blame anyone for being addicted, though? The sandwich features a breakfast portion of the restaurant's famous boneless chicken breast that is seasoned to perfection and served on a freshly baked buttermilk biscuit. It's little wonder that patrons tend to ponder what exactly the restaurant puts in the menu item to make it so irresistible. According to The Chicken Wire, the Chicken Biscuit is a direct reflection of Shona Johnson, a member of Chick-fil-A's culinary and commercialization team who has been making improvements to the sandwich for nearly 20 years. Her biscuit roots run deep. As a child, she grew up watching her great-grandmother make biscuits every day. Johnson said, I was very lucky that I came from a legacy of people who are very comfortable in the kitchen. In other words, the world owes a great debt to Granny Johnson. In case you haven't caught on yet, Chick-fil-A is kind of like the fairy godmother of the fast food world. It's impossibly optimistic, smells like heaven, and does its very best to make sure you get whatever your heart or your stomach desires. And like any such magical presence would, Chick-fil-A has been known to put your needs before its own. No, they won't be handing out glass slippers anytime soon, but they might indeed give out complimentary breakfast. In fact, year after year, they've been known to hand out breakfast freebies left and right. The catch is, you never know when it will happen. So do yourself a favor and download the Chick-fil-A One app, follow them on social media, and keep an eye out for those offers. No one wants to miss a free breakfast. Or if you haven't heard about any promos in your area, you can always take the advice of this Twitter user who claims all Chick-fil-A locations offer a free breakfast item on Tuesday mornings. Apparently, all you have to do is ask, what's today's free item? And just like that, you might get something on the house.
The fast food industry has its own specific set of urban legends, and not surprisingly, at least one revolves around Chick-fil-A. You know how these things go. You hear people talk about it in passing, they spread the word in hushed whispers, but until you experience it for yourself, you can never really be sure if it's real. In this case, we're talking about the myth of the free breakfast biscuits. We trace the rumor back as far as 2012 when a Twitter user claimed, So apparently if you go to Chick-fil-A at 1031 and they have extra biscuits, they're free. In 2014, another Twitter user confirmed that timing is important but said that chicken biscuits were also on the table. Always go to Chick-fil-A right after they stop serving breakfast because they give you the extra chicken biscuits. Hashtag you're welcome. So while we can't confirm for sure if this is a real policy, there's one way for you to find out for sure. Get yourself to Chick-fil-A at 1031 and see if you get any freebies. Believe it or not, there is a way to win free Chick-fil-A for an entire year. It isn't an urban legend either. Of course, there's a catch. Are you ready to hear the truth? You can't handle the truth! Every time Chick-fil-A opens a restaurant in a new location, they encourage patrons to participate in an overnight event at the new restaurant's parking lot. Called the First 100 Campout, it rewards the first 100 customers in line for breakfast on the first morning of the restaurant's opening with free Chick-fil-A for a year. This tradition, which dates back to 2003, does come with a few caveats. You must be 18 or older, have a valid government-issued ID, or other form of identification with your age and residence, and you must live in the zip codes listed for each restaurant at the time of the opening. And full Full disclosure, you don't get to eat Chick-fil-A to your heart's content. Rather, you'll get a promotional card valid for 52 Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich meals or one per week. But still, it's so worth it. On May 22, 2021, an employee of Chick-fil-A uploaded a video to TikTok titled, What They Do Every Night With The Chicken Nuggets, and it shows a worker dumping an entire tray full of the bite-sized treats into a trash bin. The video has since gone viral with 7 million views and counting, and commenters, as you may imagine, have been appalled at the amount of food waste. Fox News even picked up the story as the uproar surged. One person wondered why the food wasn't able to be given to the homeless community. But considering that it's meat, which is perishable, and not something more shelf-stable like a donut, other commenters chimed in that it would make people sick to eat food that's been sitting out that long, and would be a liability to the restaurant chain. The actual reason, as provided by Love It Blog, is that food banks cannot take already cooked food. So Chick-fil-A can donate their surplus of uncooked chicken nuggets, but not the ones that have already been prepared for potential customers. However, there is nothing stopping the company from offering those cooked nuggets for free towards the end of the night, when they are closing up shop. Other people express sadness that such treasures of chickeny goodness would have to go to waste. Just watching the video and seeing the scores of nuggets cascade is rather, well, foul. In their coverage of the viral video, Daily Dot notes that Chick-fil-A did in fact create a shared table program in 2012 to address these issues, whereby they donate the unused food to local organizations, including soup kitchens, nonprofits, and homeless shelters. On their corporate website, Chick-fil-A explains that the shared table program succeeds by having their workers package the restaurant's extra food to send to partner organizations, which then serve it to those in need. More than 1,300 Chick-fil-A locations participate in the program, and eight million meals have been served through these donations, says Chick-fil-A. But Daily Dot notes a 2013 survey by the Food Waste Reduction Alliance, which found that, in general, just 1.4 percent of food from restaurants ends up being donated for various reasons. So it's unclear how effective programs like Shared Table are. In fairness, the lack of accurately reporting the donations could be chalked up to responsibilities between independent franchisees and the parent company that launched the initiative. Moreover, the waste in this particular viral video could be the practice of just one specific Chick-fil-A restaurant and not the chain as a whole. It appears Chick-fil-A did not respond to various requests for comment on the story, further leaving viewers to ponder over the viral video that shows food waste in action. Hopefully, the exposure leads to a bigger look into what can be done about putting all food to use for those in need. While the video is undoubtedly a bad look for Chick-fil-A, the brand should not bear the brunt of the outrage alone. As recently as 2017, Move for Hunger, a nonprofit dedicated to fighting food scarcity and unnecessary waste, relayed reports that 85% of all food left unused in most American restaurants is discarded, rather than being recycled or donated. Even more alarming, the site calculated that a half pound of food is wasted for every restaurant meal. That's millions of pounds that could otherwise be utilized every year for the reported 42 million people facing food insecurity in the country. Of course, the gravity of the situation doesn't always take the attention of the customer. In 2019, Statista shared a graph demonstrating this phenomenon. The site noted that of the thousand adults surveyed for the study, 81% said they either never thought about food waste while eating out or only thought about it sometimes, presumably when they've had such a large meal that they could neither finish it nor bring it home. In Chick-fil-A's case, as with most fast-food restaurants, the waste is predominantly from pre-cooked meals. The only way to really tackle this problem is by finding more innovative ways of getting rid of those unpurchased nuggets, or by transitioning to a made-to-order model, which may hinder the very fast service of a fast-food restaurant. So, while the Chick-fil-A video is astounding to watch, it is our dining culture that perhaps needs a greater look. 
Chick-fil-A has been known to throw out the rule book when it comes to fast food. They spent $50 million to ensure their delicious chicken stays in a league of their own, stepped up the French fry game by serving their popular waffle fries, and you'll never find a Chick-fil-A open on Sunday. The chain has its own way of doing things, and they are clearly not afraid to experiment and innovate. Chick-fil-A has done the same thing when it comes to their employees and how they interact with customers. If you've ever been to a Chick-fil-A, you know that when you say thank you, employees don't respond with the typical, you're welcome. Instead, you hear, My pleasure, you have a fantastic day. There is a reason Chick-fil-A employees don't say you're welcome, and it stems back to founder Truett Cathy's experience at the luxury Ritz-Carlton Hotel. This is all part of what the fried chicken chain refers to as, quote, second mile service, meaning they want to not only meet customer expectations, but exceed them. According to Chick-fil-A's official blog, The Chicken Wire, the importance of customer service was something Kathy learned at a young age. Whether it was selling Coca-Cola bottles to neighbors or delivering newspapers, Kathy did so with the utmost care. So it comes as no surprise that when Kathy started Chick-fil-A, he told his employees to treat every customer as if they were the president. The endearing response of, my pleasure, only adds to that experience, and actually came about from an interaction Kathy had with an employee at the Ritz-Carlton. When Kathy said thank you, the employee responded by saying, my pleasure. Those two words really made the hotel stand apart from the competition in Kathy's mind. Not only did he feel the sincerity in those words, but he could see it in the man's genuine smile. Kathy went home and asked his owners and staff to start incorporating my pleasure into the Chick-fil-A daily routine. Take your payment up at the Red Umbrella and we're all set. All right, my pleasure. Have a good day. The two-word phrase has become an unspoken rule over the years. However, a former Chick-fil-A team leader wrote in a Reddit post that the phrase is not a requirement and other responses from Chick-fil-A staff are acceptable. Once you've been to a Chick-fil-A, though, you'll understand that, though accepted, anything less just won't cut it. As the Redditor explained, We can say you're welcome and of course, but it doesn't have the same effect as my pleasure. Another worker pointed out that you won't find my pleasure in any part of the Chick-fil-A training program. The response is a learned behavior, and it's one that customers have come to love. Though not a required response, the employees stated that they felt using the phrase my pleasure comes down to simple courtesy. The phrase, my pleasure, may be something you can expect to hear at Chick-fil-A's across the U.S., but it wasn't always that way. According to an unofficial Chick-fil-A podcast appropriately titled, My Pleasure, Truett Cathy initially requested this thoughtful wording be used in 2001 at an annual seminar the chain holds for its operators. Cathy added that the extra kind response really means nothing if it isn't delivered while making eye contact. After delivering this mission, saying my pleasure took a little while to catch on. The former chief marketing officer of Chick-fil-A, Steve Robinson, wrote in his book Covert Cows and Chick-fil-A, How Faith, Cows, and Chicken Built an Iconic Brand, that Kathy made the same request for the phrase to be used more widely the very next year. In 2003, realizing how committed his father was to hearing my pleasure ring out from store to store, Kathy's son Dan began leading by example and using my pleasure in his day-to-day -day life while encouraging other Chick-fil-A employees of all ranks to do the same. Chick-fil-A has become a lethal force over the years. In 2018, its sales surpassed Wendy's, Burger King, Taco Bell, and Subway. Who knows, maybe it's the simple my pleasure experience that's tipping the scale enough to give those fast food chains a run for their money. Even with the success of its chicken sandwich, Popeye still doesn't have Chick-fil-A beat when it comes to being America's favorite fast food chain. Not even McDonald's can seem to touch Chick-fil-A in the brand satisfaction and customer loyalty category, according to QSR Magazine. When one considers just how popular the chicken chain is with American consumers, operating one of their franchises seems like it would be a pretty lucrative business endeavor. Owning a Chick-fil-A franchise comes with some different stipulations than the other fast food chains out there, however. Then again, part of what has made Chick-fil-A so successful is also what separates them from their competitors. For those who do manage to open a Chick-fil-A franchise, and getting one isn't easy, the income is very good. As for exactly how much a Chick-fil-A franchisee, excuse us, the company calls them operators, makes a year, well, that obviously can vary depending on the store. According to a Forbes article, in 2007, a single-store operator took home an average salary of $100,000. That's by no means bad, but 2007 was years ago, and Chick-fil-A's popularity has only grown since then. So much money! Wow!
Most fast food companies don't make it widely known just how much their franchise owners earn a year, but that doesn't mean it's not possible to get a pretty good idea. According to the franchise information group Franchise City, a Chick-fil-A operator today can expect to earn an average of around $200,000 a year. This calculation is based on the average restaurant's earnings and the percent gross that operators take. The chicken business pays pretty well, but the tough part is actually getting the business. But surprisingly, Chick-fil-A spokesperson Amanda Hanna told Business Insider, the barrier to entry for being a franchisee is never going to be money. The company is pretty picky about who they allow to run their restaurants and looks at an applicant's involvement within the community with a fine-tooth comb. To put into perspective just how few people make the cut, every year Chick-fil-A gets around 20,000 inquiries about opening a franchise, but Hannah says that only between 75 and 80 are selected. Those aren't good odds, but getting a Chick-fil-A franchise is going to be a lot cheaper than just about any other fast food joint. Compared to other franchises such as McDonald's, which asks for a $45,000 startup fee and liquid assets of $500,000, Chick-fil-A's $10,000 fee is a real bargain. In fact, it's actually the cheapest fast food franchise a person can buy. That's a real steal compared to the $30,000 average fast food franchise startup fee. And for the curious, the next cheapest is Subway and Church's Chicken at around $15,000 each. Just because Chick-fil-A has the lowest startup fee, that doesn't necessarily make them the best deal for investors. Whereas most fast food restaurants take a royalty fee of between 4 to 8 percent of monthly sales, Chick-fil-A takes 15 percent, almost double that of every major fast food franchise. Ouch! So what's up with this enormously high royalty fee that operators must pay out to their chicken boss every month? Well, it's pretty simple, really. If you want to open a McDonald's or Taco Bell, for example, it's on you, the investor, to foot the bill for the real estate, building materials, and so forth. This is why most fast food franchises require potential franchise owners to have so much in liquid assets. They don't want the franchise buyer to run out of money before the fry machine even gets plugged in. Chick-fil-A, on the other hand, covers those hundreds of thousands of dollars that it costs to get a fast food restaurant up and running. Depending on where the new Chick-fil-A restaurant is located, those costs can sort at $2 million. You gotta sell a lot of nuggets and sandwiches to get that money back, hence the high royalty fee, plus 50% of any profit. Just like other fast food chains, Chick-fil-A has its own requirements for operators, but on the plus side, operators do get Sundays off. We'll be the first to admit that we know a ton about Chick-fil-A's food. So it's with that extensive knowledge, plus additional research, that this list is compiled. So without further ado, here is every Chick-fil-A entree ranked from worst to best. Let's just get this out of the way. The grilled nuggets aren't that bad. What they are not, however, are nuggets. When Robert C. Baker invented the nugget, it had a crispy coating. We can't just haphazardly cut up food and call the bits nuggets. This is really not debatable. There's no nugget without a fried exterior. Sorry, grilled nuggets. You taste good, but in the big picture of rankings, you're last. The Cobb salad and grilled nuggets are twins. Chick-fil-A's Cobb salad simply isn't a Cobb salad. It's a salad with some chicken in it. After all, when the Brown Derby restaurant in Hollywood debuted the salad, everything came finely diced. Chick-fil-A doesn't even chop up the tomatoes. For the principle of the matter, this is a big pass. The Chick-fil-A original sandwich is what made Chick-fil-A what it is today. But for some reason, Chick-fil-A decided to add another menu option called the Deluxe Sandwich, which is basically just the original sandwich but with lettuce, tomato, and your choice of cheese added on. There's nothing wrong with putting that stuff on a chicken sandwich, but in Chick-fil-A's case, it's simply not needed. The grilled chicken sandwich is great in and of itself, but there's no real reason to have a slice of bacon on it. The sandwich also has an odd build with the cheese and bacon on the top, then lettuce and tomato on the bottom. It's not a typical way you see a chicken sandwich with bacon. Wendy's and Burger King plop everything on top, and it probably works best that way. If you're not heading to Chick-fil-A for a salad, maybe you should. The twist to their grilled market salad is the fruit. You'll find strawberries, blueberries, and apples all tucked away with the signature grilled chicken served on top. Add in one of the lighter salad dressings, perhaps a tasty vinaigrette, and you've got a flavorish, low-calorie meal that will fill you up. The big difference between the spicy deluxe sandwich and the standard deluxe is how much better the veggies work with the heat. To balance the heat, the lettuce and tomato work in concert to cool you down. The cheese, however, does the opposite. The standard cheese accompaniment is pepper jack, which is really just a Monterey Jack with chili spices in it. In this case, the cheese is an unnecessary add-on. Easily the most overlooked item on the menu, the grilled chicken cool wrap is an afterthought on most days. Served cold, the wrap really hits the spot on a hot day. The only drawback is the flaxseed bread, which can be inconsistent. It can be doughy at times and, depending on the storage methods, almost wet. Despite that, the wrap is still worth a purchase, especially in the summer months. There are two things that make this salad stand out, the tortilla chips that garnish the salad and a wonderful chili lime vinaigrette that has a mere 60 calories per pack. Another nice touch is the roasted corn and black beans. 
You really don't expect a complex salad from a fast food restaurant, but this salad is a hidden gem. Chick-fil-A reintroduced the grilled chicken sandwich in 2014, giving it more of a backyard feel and flavor. It might not be very backyard, but it certainly is tasty. The key is a tangy marinade that includes apple cider vinegar, plus orange juice and grape juice. It's got a refreshing bite that really hits the taste buds perfectly. Along with their suggested honey barbecue sauce, the sandwich really works. I think you'll find it's something you can't get anywhere else. Let's not kid ourselves, the original sandwich still blows the feathers off all the other quick-serve places out there. But there are other things you have to do to make it work. Think about it. How do you eat your Chick-fil-A sandwich? Do you take the pickles off? Hit it with an extra sauce? The sandwich is great, but it's not the type of thing you just pull out of the bag and start eating. A sandwich should be able to stand on its own, and the Chick-fil-A sandwich only kinda can. The most underrated item on the entire Chick-fil-A menu is the chicken strips. The strips are basically a step between a sandwich and nuggets. They pack the simplicity of nuggets and the lasting taste of a sandwich into each little strip. And you get three or four, depending on your hunger. The chicken strips go with the dipping sauce of your choice and are the perfect choice when the nuggets won't quite do. Some markets offer a 30-count nugget, which sounds like the greatest thing ever. A standard order will get you eight or 12 nuggets, plus the sauce of your choosing. We're not going to debate which sauce is best, only that they all work. The key to the nuggets is the size. They're perfectly bite-sized and the coating is just the right amount of crunch. Yes, our nuggets are made with lots of love. <laughs> the Chick-fil-A nuggets are outstanding and the easiest can't-miss item on the menu. It's the safety school of Chick-fil-A menu items. If you're introducing someone to the restaurant for the first time, the nugget should knock their socks off. Paprika and spices, according to the ingredients list, are what bring the heat to Chick-fil-A's spicy sandwich. There's a really good chance that cayenne and chili powder are a couple of those spices. The paprika and other spices are not messing around. You can easily build up a neck sweat while polishing off one of these. The wonderfully odd thing is that the heat doesn't really linger. It's just there, and poof, it's gone. That's the magic of the spicy sandwich, and why it's so amazing. However, if the initial heat is too much for your mouth, you can always cool it down a bit with the garlic and herb branch sauce. It's the spiciest sandwich out there, and the best tasting spicy sandwich by far. Chick-fil-A sauce is 35 years old, and what a journey it's had from a store in a mall to the most beloved sauce at America's most beloved quick-serve chain. You've probably had it a ton of times, and you might even love it, but what don't you know about it? Chick-fil-A lets everyone know they invented the chicken sandwich, but they were also pretty early in the nugget game. It's almost unthinkable, but the nugget debuted with no dipping sauce accompaniment. Fortunately, Virginia-based franchisee Hugh Fleming realized there was something major missing. So did his customers, and when they started requesting some sauce, Fleming put his sauce-inventing hat on and went to work. He didn't exactly reinvent the wheel, at least not at first. The original sauce was simply a homemade honey mustard dressing, but it was a huge hit. They first incorporated it into their store in the Spotsylvania Mall, but this was only Chick-fil-A sauce version 1.0. When an employee on a lunch break accidentally mixed in barbecue sauce with their honey mustard, they ended up with the delicious winner we know today. The Chick-fil-A sauce we all know and love is essentially honey mustard and barbecue sauce. But what else is in there? Strangely, Fleming's original recipe called for a bit of the Chick-fil-A coleslaw drippings, which makes sense. Look at today's official ingredients and you'll see it contains most of the ingredients of their gone too soon coleslaw. But here's the weird thing. Chick-fil-A claimed in a tweet that the other part was actually ranch dressing. So are they telling the truth and the ingredients have been swapped somewhere along the way? Or are they trying to derail our efforts to make our own delectable Chick-fil-A sauce. Few people really know the truth, and they're not sharing. Everyone knows it as Chick-fil-A sauce, but originally that wasn't what people called it. That's because it didn't officially have a name, and anyone wanting more would ask for that special sauce or Mr. Fleming's sauce. Fleming himself never got around to coming up with a name, and it's entirely possible that's because he was too busy making more. According to Fleming, people would literally leave their food at the table uneaten if you ran out of the sauce. At one point, his crew was whipping up 18 gallons a day, and they even employed a single person to simply fill the sauce cups. Eventually, they placed the sauce in a pump bottle and even sold it by the jar. If you didn't feel like actually buying the stuff, you could always just empty your soda cup out, rinse it, and then fill it to the brim. And yes, people really did that. Chick-fil-A certainly took notice of all the sauce success and wanted in on the action. The problem was, Mr. Fleming's sauce was just that. It belonged to Mr. Fleming, not Chick-fil-A. That meant the folks in Atlanta had to come up with their own sauce that would be similar to the addictive stuff from Virginia. 
The sauce they came up with wasn't bad, but it also wasn't a sauce to fill your soda cup with. What's a company to do? Hugh Fleming had been in the Chick-fil-A biz for close to 27 years when, in 2007, he decided to finally retire. It was a big deal, and looking back on his life, Fleming realised that if it wasn't for Chick-fil-A, his life would have turned out much differently. So he just went ahead and gave the secret formula to corporate for free. Fleming said, It was, as far as I was concerned, a shared credit as far as making it successful. It was my way of paying the company back. It took about a year for Chick-fil-A to get the sauce mass-produced and in 2008 it rolled out nationwide as Chick-fil-A sauce. Immediately, it became the number one sauce available at Chick-fil-A. A third of all sauces given to customers is Chick-fil-A sauce, which is well over 285 million packets annually. And now the bad news. It's not exactly good for you. That little one ounce packet contains 170 milligrams of sodium, which is roughly the equivalent of a small piece of bacon. And the calories? There are 140 calories in a single packet, and you can look at it this way. If you use two packs of sauce, you've eaten more calories in sauce than what's in the nuggets, since one order of nuggets is just 260 calories. Is it worth it? You ready, champ? I'm ready for this my whole life. Chick-fil-A has had a long time to perfect their biscuits, and it shows because they're delicious. Fans already know that each biscuit is handmade, but what else goes into making these so gosh darn good? Quite a bit. We all know that baked goods are the best when they're right out of the oven. That's why Chick-fil-A has biscuit making on a rotation that guarantees each and every customer is going to get a biscuit that's warm and fresh. Chick-fil-A's biscuit-making teams are a well-oiled machine. Each tray holds 20 biscuits, and each time one comes out of the oven, there's another one ready and waiting to go in. There's a lot of work that goes into the entire process, too, and considering they do it over and over again every day they're open, serving up biscuits starting at 6 a.m. and ending at 10.30 a.m. And those first biscuits that are served to the earliest of early bird customers? Since it takes about half an hour to make a tray of biscuits from start to finish, employees have actually been there since 5.30 a.m., mixing, kneading, and baking. There's no leftover from last night biscuits here. Finally, biscuits. Big biscuits. Watch a Chick-fil-A baker while they're prepping their dough, and you'll notice something that looks a little different from other bakers. There's a very specific way they roll out the dough, and they do it all very carefully. First, the dough gets very gently rolled. They're not pushing too hard. Then they fold the dough gently into thirds and roll it again. Those steps aren't arbitrary, according to the culinary expert Wing Lao. And what those folds will do is those folds will make sure we have a consistent dough and also incorporate some air in there. According to King Arthur Flour, being gentle with the dough is crucial. Be too rough, fold it or knead it too many times, and you'll develop more of that gluten. Then there's the folding. That's a not-so-secret technique many biscuit makers love. Anyone who's baked knows how difficult mixing can be. You don't want to undermix something and fail at completely incorporating all of your ingredients, but you don't want to overmix something either. That's why culinary expert Wing Lao says they mix their dough in a commercial mixer for a very precise amount of time, just 18 seconds. Mixing the right amount of time is crucial to getting biscuits to rise and to be the right density and flakiness and 18 seconds works perfectly for Chick-fil-A and the amount of ingredients in each batch. Part of the awesomeness of Chick-fil-A's biscuits is how well they rise. They're thick and straight to hold all that chicken. There's no lopsided biscuits in sight, and according to Wing Lao, there's actually a super simple rule their bakers follow to get them to rise like that. Lao says the trick is to put a bit of flour on the edge of the biscuit cutter, then cut straight down and lift straight up. Part of the reason Chick-fil-A sandwiches are so amazing is the perfect chicken-to-biscuit ratio in each and every bite. And it's a simple way to make sure each biscuit has that potential. Keeping the dough cool is of the utmost importance. And here's another little trick Chick-fil-A uses to get those perfect biscuits. They use tools, not their hands. When they're taking the dough out of the mixing bowl, they do it with metal spatulas. It's folded with metal spatulas, and the rounds of dough are transferred to the baking tray on a metal spatula. That all keeps the dough as cold as possible before it's put into the oven, as it's not being warmed by hands. And Southern Living says that warming the dough with your hands is one of the biggest, most common mistakes people make. 
Using tools might mean more dishes to wash, but it's one more way they're making sure they're putting the best thing possible into the oven. What's a few more dishes to do when breakfast service winds down? Butter isn't exactly a secret ingredient, but how Chick-fil-A uses it in their biscuits is a little different than you might expect. Watch their bakers and you'll see they use butter a lot. It's rubbed on the tray before the raw biscuits are loaded on, a generous helping is painted on when the biscuits come out of the oven, and it's painted on before they're put into the oven too. The final result is a biscuit that's filled with buttery goodness, not just topped by it. And we all know that the more butter there is, the better. A big part of what makes a good biscuit is texture, but taste is important too. Anyone who has enjoyed a Chick-fil-A biscuit knows that there's just a hint of sweetness in there, and that's what makes it truly special. And they've included something of a secret ingredient. But what is it? A look at the ingredient list doesn't really give too many hints. There's a ton of sugar in those biscuits, but baked goods usually have sugar. There are some more cryptic ingredients like natural flavor, that still doesn't clear anything up. Plenty of enterprising bakers have tried to crack the secret, and many copycat recipes add honey to try to get that same signature sweetness. Do any of them come close? Not really, but they'll do on a Sunday. Sometimes I feel you don't know food at all. It takes 30 minutes from start to finish to make a tray of Chick-fil-A biscuits, and part of that is baking. Culinary expert Wing Lao says that what they're looking for is a biscuit that's not overcooked and one that's brown on the outside while still being soft in the middle. That's a tough balance to find, but there's a trick. It's all about oven temperature. The ideal temperature for baking biscuits is at 475 degrees Fahrenheit. They'll only take about 15 minutes at that temperature, and when they come out, they'll have risen very, very quickly. They'll be light, flaky, golden brown, and delicious. Chick-fil-A has had decades to perfect the process, and they've managed to do precisely that. Chick-fil-A doesn't advertise its secret menu with the same enthusiasm as some other fast food joints. In fact, they deny that they even have one. But that doesn't mean that you can't hack your way through the menu to your heart's content. Keep watching to discover the possibilities. If you're in the mood for an off-menu dessert, you can make a cookie ice cream sandwich by ordering a cup of ice cream soft serve and two chocolate chunk cookies. Even though Chick-fil-A denies having a secret menu, its Chicken Wire blog provides a tutorial on exactly how to put one together. And they also have a video that shows you how to turn it into a holiday-inspired treat. And individual stores have even been known to promote this concoction on Instagram. You might have to be prepared to build the ice cream sandwich on your own, although if you ask nicely, an associate might just do it for you. But it's not exactly an unheard of request. Here's an extra tip. During the holiday months when Chick-fil-A releases its peppermint chocolate chip shake, they have peppermint shavings and chocolate chips on hand. Ask for a side of each and mix them into your ice cream before layering it between your cookies. With the addition of chocolate chips, you don't have to crush the peppermints yourself, although you may have to pay a little extra for the sides. The Chicken Minis Masterpiece is another not-so-secret menu item that Chick-fil-A has featured on the Chicken Wire. It's pretty straightforward to order. Ask for some Chicken Minis and a side of hash browns, which are pretty much perfectly sized for adding to the Chicken Minis buns. Dip the hash browns in your favorite Chick-fil-A sauce, and if you can't decide which one you like best, ask for a couple of different flavors. Then add the hash browns to the Minis before eating. If you want to amp up these mini sandwiches even more, ask for a side of pickles. Or if you happen to live in certain parts of Texas, you can ask for a side of sliced jalapeno peppers to spice things up. One more idea that can maximize the size of these minis is a slice of cheese on the side. Fold the cheese into quarters, then tear apart into four equal pieces. Put one piece on each chicken mini and enjoy. The plain old Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is a reliable classic. It's just an unassuming chicken patty with pickles served on a buttered bun. It's hard to argue with that simple perfection, but if you want to branch out and try something different, you can turn it into a buffalo chicken sandwich. It honestly couldn't be easier. In some locations, you may even be able to ask for it directly and receive it pre-slathered in Chick-fil-A's zesty buffalo sauce. But if the cashier looks confused at your request, just ask for a packet of the zesty buffalo sauce on the side. When you receive your order, open up your bun and add the sauce on top. 
And that's far from the only way to customize your favorite sandwich. You could try another spicy option in the form of a sriracha chicken sandwich by asking for a side of sriracha sauce with your sandwich. You can pour the sauce on top of your patty, or you can coat the patty completely by following these tips. Remove the buns and set them aside, then place the chicken patty in the sandwich bag and pour the sauce inside. Fold the top of the bag over to keep the sauce inside and shake the bag for a few seconds, thus coating the chicken patty in sauce. Then remove the patty and replace it in the bun, and you're all set. Peach milkshakes aren't on Chick-fil-A's permanent menu due to the seasonal availability of fresh peaches. But for about three months every summer, this fan favorite is ready to be ordered. And you might not realize that you can ask the cashier to customize your shake into strawberry peach perfection. Since strawberry milkshakes are offered year-round, all you have to do is ask for a little bit of the strawberry topping to be added to the peach milkshake before blending. It's that simple. I think I'll name him Barry! But you don't have to stop there with your milkshake customizations. Why not add the strawberry topping to your chocolate milkshake? Or you could put the Oreo cookies that are used to make the cookies and cream milkshake into your chocolate shake for a chocolate cookies and cream concoction. Stop letting the menu boards limit you. You have more options than you realize. And here's one more quick tip in the same vein. You can customize your lemonade or tea in much the same way. For example, you can get a strawberry lemonade by adding the strawberry topping from the milkshakes to your lemonade. And there's no reason that you couldn't also ask for strawberry tea if you're so inclined. Chick-fil-A's root beer float is another classic, not-so-secret menu item. The chain always offers root beer, and the soft-serve ice dream is also always on tap. So procuring a root beer float is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is ask for one, and the cashier should know what you're talking about. While this isn't an official item, it's popular enough that some stores have offered free root beer floats to customers. And if you're still not sure you want to give the root beer float a try, you might be interested in learning that up-and-coming pop singer Haven has also been known to enjoy the treat when not recording music, as she revealed on Twitter in 2015. Overall, the hardest part about ordering a root beer float is deciding what size drink you want. We suggest splurging for the large. You only live once, after all. Standard Chick-fil-A waffle fries are good, but what if you could make them even crispier? Who doesn't love a crispier french fry? As it turns out, there's a hack for that. All you have to do is ask for your fries to be well done, and you'll be served perfectly crispy waffle fries. Chick-fil-A customer Alex Benton didn't mince words when she posted a picture of her crispier fries to Facebook and declared, Life-changing PSA. Next time you go to Chick-fil-A, order your fries well done. No more soggy fries. You're welcome. Using the phrase life-changing might sound a bit overboard, but the image of those perfectly crispy fries should be enough to make anyone's mouth water. And that's not the only rave review out there. As former Chick-fil-A employee Kate Cook wrote on SpoonUniversity.com, This is by far the greatest thing I learned during my time at Chick-fil-A. You can order your fries well done and they'll be twice fried. Cook also noted that the shape of the waffle fries is especially appropriate for this double fry because the outside crisps up nicely while leaving the inside soft. She follows this tip every time she eats at Chick-fil-A, as she also noted, it's also the best way to ensure that you're getting the freshest fries possible. Waffle fries aren't the only Chick-fil-A item that you can request well done. If you're looking for a crispier chicken sandwich, all you have to do is ask for it. In a Reddit thread discussing Chick-fil-A secret menu items, one user added the tip for ordering a sandwich well done, and it quickly became clear that he wasn't the only one who had tried it out. One commenter raved, well done is the only way I'll eat my sandwiches from them now. Can never go back. And another chimed in with, let them fry a little longer. Get all them crispy bits crispier. And as former employee Kate Cook noted in her Spoon University article, any customization ensures that your sandwich will be made fresh when you place your order. It's a great way to avoid the possibility that an employee could just grab a waiting sandwich that's been hanging out under the heat lamps for who knows how long. You might be able to find some other Chick-fil-A secret menu lists that have recommended a grilled cheese sandwich as a go-to off-menu item. Indeed, there's even a Reddit thread with responses from employees that confirms that, yes, you can order a grilled cheese sandwich, which is basically a buttered bun with cheese, without too much trouble. As one Reddit commenter noted, you don't have to jump through any major hoops to place your order. As that commenter recounted, the person behind me in line the other day ordered, no joke, a spicy chicken deluxe sandwich with bacon added and without the lettuce, tomato, and chicken, 
and the cashier just said, so you want a bacon grilled cheese? And the woman just sheepishly said, uh, yeah. So clearly, grilled cheese is an option at Chick-fil-A, as is a bacon grilled cheese or a tomato grilled cheese. But when you're in the mood for a delicious cheese-filled Chick-fil-A delight, you're selling yourself short by opting for just a basic grilled cheese. Instead, you should be a little more adventurous and ask for your favorite chicken sandwich with a side of mac and cheese. When you get the sandwich, spoon about half of your mac and cheese inside and boom! You now have a loaded, cheesy, buttery chicken sandwich that deserves a spot on any trendy restaurant table. In a Chick-fil-A Reddit thread entitled, Let's Compile the Comprehensive Secret Menu for Chick-fil-A, Share Your Favorite Secret Menu Item, one commenter was very bullish about the grilled chicken bagel. This option consists of a bagel, which is always available for breakfast sandwiches, topped with a grilled chicken filet, Colby Jack cheese, tomato, and cream cheese. Just think about all that for a moment. Two cheeses, chicken, and a slice of tomato layered between a bagel bun? That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? That same Reddit commenter also shared a bunch of other secret menu ideas that were shot down by several Chick-fil-A employees because they would be impossible to fulfill at a busy restaurant. Those same employees did indicate, though, that the grilled chicken bagel, on the other hand, would be easy to put together. This sentiment is especially true during morning hours when bagels and cream cheese are typically served. But ultimately, it comes down to each particular location and how much they're willing or able to customize at any given time of the day. There are lots of go-to secret menu items that are hardly a secret. Options like adding bacon obviously taste pretty great, but that's not particularly noteworthy, as you can add an order of bacon to pretty much whatever you want to eat. The only way this could be considered a secret is if you didn't know that Chick-fil-A offers bacon on its menu. Likewise, doubling up on patties could be considered another Chick-fil-A hack, as that option's certainly not on the regular menu, but it's standard for pretty much any fast food joint if you want some extra meat. But one simple Chick-fil-A hack that most people probably don't know about is that you can ask for your sandwich to be double breaded. Yes, indeed, you can have double the fried breading goodness with double the crispiness and double the crunch on any crispy chicken sandwich that you want. Business Insider detailed the experience of a Chick-fil-A cook who simply has to dip the chicken in milk wash, coat it with breading, dip it in milk wash a second time, coat it in breading again, and then put it in the fryer. One Chick-fil-A fan named Peter Aaron Victor Holiday shared his love of this option on Facebook by declaring, Y'all have got to get your sandwich double breaded at Chick-fil-A. Share to get the word out. I love bread. I love bread. So definitely try out all these secret menu items and then get the word out. Everyone has to do their part. When you go to Chick-fil-A, you probably plan on ordering chicken. It's practically a foregone conclusion, given that chicken is right there in the fast food restaurant's name. And chicken is chicken, right? Maybe not. Here are a few of the things you're really eating when you stop at Chick-fil-A. It shouldn't come as a massive surprise that some Chick-fil-A products include sugar. Obviously, they sell sodas and shakes, fruit cups and cookies, all of which are rife with sugar content. Plus, sugars are commonly found both naturally and as additives in breads, fruits and vegetables. But what may throw you for a loop is the fact that Chick-fil-A's chicken includes added sugars. And it's not just the breaded chicken that has sugar in it, which makes sense given that breading adds carbohydrates to the food you're eating. It's Chick-fil-A's grilled chicken that includes sugar listed as an ingredient in the chicken. Take, for instance, an order of grilled chicken nuggets. Theoretically, it should only include chicken as an ingredient. But if you look at the list of ingredients included in an order of grilled chicken nuggets on the Chick-fil-A website, you'll see 25 different items included, such as spices, preservatives, and you guessed it, sugar. Granted, the total sugar content is just one gram, so it's not like they've added a massive amount of sugar to their grilled chicken. But it's something to keep in mind, especially when ordering some of their other sandwiches. For instance, the Grilled Chicken Sandwich and Grilled Chicken Club both contain 9 grams of sugar, according to the company's nutrition information webpage. It may seem strange that Chick-fil-A's grilled chicken has so many ingredients, but if you think about it, it's not that weird. When you prepare chicken at home, do you ever prepare it completely plain without any added spices or marinades? Probably not. Really, the 25 ingredients included in Chick-fil-A's grilled chicken are there as part of the brine used to give the chicken the delicious flavor you just can't get enough of. And what's at the base of that brine? Apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar, along with a slew of other flavorings including molasses, dehydrated onion, sea salt, lemon juice, and paprika, among others, help to give Chick-fil-A's chicken the consistent moist and full flavor you've come to expect. And let's be honest, 
Grilled chicken nuggets without a tangy brine would be pretty bland. Prepped and cooked like this, it's something you're actually willing to pay for. Chick-fil-A waffle fries should consist of potatoes, salt, and oil, right? Welp, that's where you're wrong. Chick-fil-A's list of ingredients for this side dish includes potatoes, three different oils, dextrose, sea salt, and a chemical for color retention. All more or less benign until you notice that the canola oil is actually listed as high oleic canola oil with, wait for it, dimethylpolysiloxane added as an anti-foaming agent. What's an anti-foaming agent, you ask? Great question! When the late former Mythbusters host Grant Imahara dissected McDonald's use of 19 ingredients in their french fries, he explained it's an additive in oil that helps prevent the oil from splashing. Again, it seems fairly benign. It's worth noting that the FDA has approved its use in small amounts, so this seems like one of those things where people see an eight-syllable word in the ingredients and get concerned. Chick-fil-A's Kale Crunch Side Salad is arguably one of the healthiest items the quick-serve restaurant has on its menu. And most of the salad's ingredients are exactly what you'd expect. Kale, green cabbage, almonds, and apple Dijon dressing. But wait a hot second before you chow down and take a full look at the ingredients in that apple Dijon dressing, as listed on the Chick-fil-A website. After oil, apple juice concentrate, maple syrup, a few different vinegars, salt, and other seasonings, white wine appears inconspicuously at the end. To be fair, it's hardly unheard of for salads or dressings to include cooking wines. But for a restaurant with a highly conservative Christian ownership and reputation, it might catch some people off guard. Those who abstain for personal reasons or those who subscribe to a Christian faith that eschews the use of alcohol in any amount may want to ask for the apple Dijon dressing to be switched out for a dressing without a dash of wine. But good luck knowing which dressing that might be. None of the other dressings feature ingredient lists on the Chick-fil-A website. While you can't find Chick-fil-A's ice cream cone listed as an option on their website, the company notes that this frozen treat is one of their most popular menu items. To be clear, this is ice cream, not ice cream, which is perplexing. Why did they decide to call it something different instead of the usual soft serve or just plain ice cream? The ingredients, which can be found listed on their site as part of their frosted coffee, frosted lemonade, and milkshakes, sound awfully close to regular ice cream, including milk fats, sugar, and a lot of preservatives, flavorings, and additives to create the soft serve consistency. All in all, it's a no harm, no foul type of ice cream adjacent offering. And if they were just looking for a catchy name to draw interest to their product, it looks like they've succeeded. You know the golden stream of buttery topping that gets pumped on top of popcorn at the movie theater? That's butter oil. It's basically just a bunch of different oils and salts and flavorings mixed together to taste like butter. But it's not really butter at all. For companies like Chick-fil-A, this butter oil, which is listed as an ingredient in their menu items like the hash brown scramble bowl and the chicken biscuit, is cheaper to buy, easier to preserve, and has a melty consistency that is just so dang addicting. Chick-fil-A's butter oil includes soybean oil, palm kernel oil, soy lecithin, natural flavor, and beta carotene for that buttery yellow color. Nothing overly concerning here, except when you note that the menu items that include butter oil also include lots of other fats and oils as part of their ingredient list. This means that the fat content is borderline obscene. For instance, the sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit contains 43 grams of fat, 19 of which are saturated. If you're trying to keep your fat and calorie intake under control, you might want to steer clear of this 630-calorie biscuit meal and other similar items. Still can't resist? Just imagine someone making your food with a giant glob of movie theater butter. Sure, it tastes good, but it looks pretty nasty. And it's not exactly a health food item. A bunch of butter and ow. I'm sorry, did you say butter and oil? No, Seth, a butter and ow. Okay. Arguably one of the least healthy items on the Chick-fil-A menu is a relatively new item, the restaurant's mac and cheese. If you've ever made mac and cheese from a box at home, you know it's not exactly filled with fresh ingredients. So if you were hoping Chick-fil-A's dedication to high-quality ingredients would ensure their mac and cheese would be free of processed cheese, it's time to set those hopes aside. After macaroni, processed cheese is the second listed ingredient on the company's website. Granted, it's still probably better than the made-from-a-box option you buy at a grocery store. Chick-fil-A does include other cheeses like cheddar, bellavitano, romano, and grated parmesan. And to be fair, it's hard to get that creamy consistency of a delicious mac and cheese without using a processed cheese. But if you're the type who steers clear of fake foods, you might want to make your mac and cheese at home. During the fat backlash of the 1980s and 1990s, the saturated fat in real butter, as well as the saturated fat in other solid fat products like Crisco, received a drubbing in the media. People were terrified of eating too much fat, especially saturated. In response, companies started promoting margarine, which was solid at room temperature, like butter, but had fewer saturated fats, because it was made by altering the chemical makeup of oils so that the oils would be solid. The world rejoiced. 
The total fat content was more or less the same, but with lower saturated fats, margarine was considered healthier. Unfortunately, it took several more decades to prove that in the process of changing the chemical makeup of these oils, trans fats were created. And trans fats are actually associated more closely with heart disease than saturated fats are. Unfortunately, some of Chick-fil-A's products, like their mac and cheese, include margarine as an ingredient, which means they might include trans fats, which don't have to be included in nutritional information if they total less than 0.5 grams per serving. That's a good thing to know if you're watching your trans fat intake. If your kids have been falling all over themselves to order the chocolate milk at Chick-fil-A, it might be because of the little-known secret for making a thicker, creamier drink — cornstarch. Cornstarch is a thickening agent, so whenever you're looking to make a thick, creamy soup, sauce, or drink, it's possible to add a little cornstarch in the process to achieve the desired result. Considering that Chick-fil-A's chocolate milk uses 1% milk, which is lower fat and therefore less thick than whole, by including cornstarch in its list of ingredients, your kids get to enjoy a creamier milk texture than what's provided by fat alone. So maybe the delicious texture and flavor are due to cornstarch. But it's possible they're also due to a few of the other ingredients in Chick-fil-A's chocolate milk, like natural vanilla, carrageenan, or even salt. Restaurants like Chick-fil-A have to make affordable food that tastes great to keep luring customers back to their doors and drive throughs And there are a few tried-and-true methods for making food taste great — salt, fat, and sugar, none of which are particularly good for you in large quantities. And while Chick-fil-A does earn marks for sourcing their food more responsibly than many restaurants, and for trying to offer healthier options, they're still a fast-food restaurant vying for market share in the world of McDonald's. This means many of their products are loaded with sodium, fat, and sugar, which translates to an obscene number of calories, sodium, and fats. Take, for instance, the Chick-fil-A Cobb salad. It's a salad, right? So it must be good for you. Well, sorry, but maybe not. This salad has 540 calories, 29 grams of fat, 8 of which are saturated, 7 grams of sugar, and a whopping 1,700 grams of sodium. Considering the FDA recommends limiting sodium to less than 2,300 grams of sodium a day, this healthy salad practically wipes out your daily allowance. And that's one of the salads. If your doctor has recommended you keep an eye on your fat, sugar, calorie, or sodium intake, make sure you do a little research on the Chick-fil-A Nutrition webpage before you place your order. One area where Chick-fil-A shines in the fast-food world is the high fiber content in many of its menu options. An article on Harvard Health notes that most Americans eat between 10 and 15 grams of fiber per day. While recommendations for positive health benefits indicate that adults should consume between 21 and 38 grams of fiber per day, depending on age and sex. That's a pretty big discrepancy between recommendations and actual intake. So when restaurants make a concerted effort to offer foods with higher fiber content, that's a good thing. Almost all of Chick-fil-A's food items include at least a gram of fiber, but many include much more. Take, for instance, the two different grilled chicken sandwiches listed on the company's website, each of which provides four grams of fiber. Or if you want an excuse for a more tantalizing treat, the strawberry milkshake and chocolate milkshake each provide four grams of fiber as well. Pretty impressive, right? Well, these all take a backseat to the grilled Cool Wrap which has an almost unbelievable 13 grams of fiber. It might actually be the healthiest, most well-balanced menu item Chick-fil-A offers. Pair it with a side salad or fruit cup, and you can feel really good about eating fast food for lunch. Did you know that Chick-fil-A's milkshakes aren't made with real ice cream? You heard right. It's just one of the ways the fast food chicken restaurant keeps its prices so low. Keep watching to find out more. Chick-fil-A has more than 140,000 hourly employees working hard behind the scenes to make sure that all of us get our fix of fried chicken. Welcome to Chick-fil-A. Without them, Chick-fil-A's entire operation would crumble, production would screech to a halt, and you'd never get to dunk Chick-fil-A's nuggets into their signature sauce ever again. And Chick-fil-A's labor force is incredibly productive. The average Chick-fil-A store outside of mall locations made over $7 million in 2020. Like many businesses, however, Chick-fil-A doesn't seem to put very much of those earnings back into its labor force. The average hourly wage across the entire U.S. population comes out to just over $16 per hour. According to Payscale, Chick-fil-A pays an average hourly wage of $11.77, well below the average. By paying much of its workforce below average wages, Chick-fil-A keeps labor costs down and menu prices low while maximizing profit. There's something special about drinking a milkshake while you're eating crispy food like fried chicken and french fries. 
The creamy sweetness of the milkshake perfectly complements the salty crunch of the food. Chick-fil-A's milkshakes come in a variety of classic flavors like vanilla, chocolate, cookies and cream, and strawberry, along with occasional seasonal flavors. But ice cream is fairly pricey these days. So how is it that Chick-fil-A can sell its milkshakes for a few bucks a pop and still turn a profit? We hate to burst your milkshake bubble, but Chick-fil-A doesn't use real ice cream. Chick-fil-A uses ice cream as the main ingredient in its milkshakes and its cones. But what is it made out of? Looking at the nutritional labels on Chick-fil-A's menu online shows that it's mostly milk fat, sugar, artificial flavorings, thickening agents, and water. Though a lower fat content makes ice cream a little healthier, it doesn't have enough fat to technically qualify as ice cream. In other words, Chick-fil-A's ice cream mimics the texture and flavoring of ice cream, but isn't the real stuff. By using artificial ice cream, Chick-fil-A keeps the price of its frozen sweet treats nice and low. They overbooked it, so it's first come, first serve now. Oh, it's just like real ice cream. Even though Chick-fil-A pays relatively low wages, it still manages to keep much of its staff long term. This is an important point, because a constant revolving door of new employees tends to be very expensive for businesses, according to The Balance Careers. Turnover costs start to pile up when you factor in hiring expenditures, pre-employment screening processes, training time, lower production rates, and extra administrative processing. Fortunately for Chick-fil-A, the rate of turnover for its franchisers is very low. Amazingly, the retention rate has hovered around 95% for 50 years. The same is true for hourly workers, who have a turnover rate of 60%, which is much lower than the national industry average. Through benefits like its scholarship program, which provides employees with up to $25,000 in tuition assistance, Chick-fil-A incentivizes staff to stay long-term. By investing in its employees through programs, Chick-fil-A is seeing the bigger picture. Keeping the rate of employee turnover low allows the company to maintain high production and low prices. Much like its artificial rendition of ice cream, Chick-fil-A uses a similar tactic for its cooking fat, using butter-flavored oil instead of authentic butter. Because real butter tends to be pricey, finding an alternative is a good way for the company to save money. And the taste is very similar. Chick-fil-A uses its butter-flavored oil on lots of its menu items, including its chicken sandwiches, hash brown scramble bowls, and sausage egg and cheese biscuits. But what's in this stuff exactly? Taking a peek at some of the nutritional labels through the menu on Chick-fil-A's website shows its butter-flavored oil is a mix of soybean oil, palm kernel oil, soy lecithin, natural flavor, and beta-carotene. According to Scientist Live, beta-carotene is used extensively throughout the food industry as a food coloring. In all likelihood, that shade of yellowish-orange you spot on Chick-fil-A's food that gives the illusion of butter is really just beta-carotene floating in oil. Using artificial butter instead of the real stuff is clearly a calculated move to keep prices low. I can't believe it's not bother. When it comes to fast food, we often believe that we're getting a better deal than we really are. For example, when you take a look at the spicy chicken sandwich on Chick-fil-A's menu, you'll notice that the price of the sandwich is around 4 bucks. For just a few more bucks, you can make the sandwich a meal by adding a side and a drink. If you choose fries and a soda, as many people do, then you're really just getting suckered out of more money in exchange for some of the restaurant's most profitable items. According to Motley Fool, soft drinks are often sold at restaurants for up to a 90% profit margin. French fries also rake in serious cash and can offset other costs because of their high profit margin. Odds are, what you are paying several dollars for only costs Chick-fil-A some spare change to serve. Because the profitability of soda and sides is so high, Chick-fil-A can keep their meal price relatively low but still make a high percentage of profit on that sale. In an effort to increase sales and production flow, Chick-fil-A has made serious investments to improve its drive through experience for customers. One important part of that effort is the formation of the Chick-fil-A drive through Innovation Team. According to Chick-fil-A, the team's mission is to ensure smooth and timely transactions throughout the drive through experience. 
In order to accomplish this, the team actually tests out transactions with real customers at Chick-fil-A's full-scale drive through mock-ups in Atlanta. Chick-fil-A has also invested in tablets to help team members relay orders to the kitchen, and has constructed extra drive through lanes at some locations so that they have the capacity to handle bigger crowds. By investing in better drive throughs Chick-fil-A is adapting to changes in the market and producing lucrative long-term results. As a fast food restaurant, Chick-fil-A has managed to achieve cult status among its fans who vouch for its tasty food options like chicken sandwiches and waffle fries. As noted by USA Today, Chick-fil-A was picked by consumers as the best fast food restaurant in 2021, and according to the American Customer Satisfaction Index, the eatery won top honors for the seventh year in a row. So they're doing something right. Welcome to Chick-fil-A. But while Chick-fil-A is a popular pick for many diners, its employees do wish that things worked a bit differently, and they often express these views on platforms like Reddit. A Redditor who works at Chick-fil-A recently wrote that they really dislike it when customers don't pay attention to them when placing an order. For this person, it's unbelievable that some customers can simply ignore their presence and refuse to make eye contact when stepping up to the counter. As discussed by the Reddit user, people often tend to simply look at their phones and don't pay attention when placing an order. The original poster wrote, They act like I'm not even there other than to whisper number one as quietly as possible, and then complain that their order wasn't right when they get to the window. As evidenced by the comments in the thread, it seems to be a common complaint among many other workers. One Chick-fil-A employee wrote that they can now read lips when taking an order, and have learned to cope with the issue. They say that they really have to listen when someone has a mask on, though. Another person mentioned that they have to tell customers that they're slightly deaf and that those customers need to be louder. The employee added that it's a highly frustrating experience. Someone else had another suggestion, writing, I've started pretending I can't hear people when they do this. When I ask them to speak up, they don't, so if I can't understand them, I just stare at them till they get the hint. With this in mind, it might be good to remember the next time you step up to the counter that a little common courtesy can go a long way. In fact, Chick-fil-A employees are consistently praised in the food service industry for their overly polite behavior. According to Business Insider, the company's staff members are known as some of the most polite workers in the food business. The article cited a report in QSR magazine that revealed Chick-fil-A employees were most likely to thank their customers at drive through locations and offer a smile when they pulled up. This seems to be a conscious decision as far as the brand is concerned, making common courtesy a big part of employee training. Mark Moritakis, Senior Director of Hospitality and Service Design at the company, told QSR in a statement, It's all about speed and accuracy, but we know our customers appreciate that we can be nice while being fast and accurate. He added that simple things such as maintaining eye contact with customers can make a big difference when they're ordering food at the restaurant's drive through Thank you. My pleasure. Y'all have a great day. And as discussed on Reddit, employees just hope that sign of respect could be returned. Chick-fil-A works extra hard to make sure its staff members feel ready to greet their customers in a friendly manner and assist them in every way possible. A former employee at the company was full of praise for the fast food brand, writing on Quora, My customer service training with Chick-fil-A was excellent, better than any I've gotten from other entry-level jobs. They were fairly clear, let the customer speak until they're done, go the extra mile, don't sweat the small expenses to win them over. A former employee at Chick-fil-A who worked with the chain for several years also mentioned on another Reddit thread that some customers could be mean and would take advantage of the fact that the staff members were extremely nice to them. However, they were so used to being polite that it was hard for them to move away from the script. In a great piece of perspective, the Redditor wrote that people can be, quote, hostile in any field, implying that it's an unavoidable part of life, and the only thing that can be controlled is someone's reaction to the situation.